obviously winning the Pac-10 is, is our goal, but expectation, it's there. We have to be focused every game. We've got to win every game and take every, every point of them. It's going to be exciting, you know, so exciting that, you know, I don't even know what to expect. You know, I love this school. I love this team. Um, we want to do well. And yeah, we're not very highly rated preseason, but we know that what matters is at the end of the season. I'm Jim Cozumar. Dan Dibley joins us from the sideline. We are very happy. You are joining us here today. It's football season, Mike. Everyone is ready for this day. Absolutely. These teams have been hitting. They've been in practice in spring ball. They've been out there in the summer. They went through a summer camp, and now they just want to hit somebody else. They are happiest. I'm afraid you're going to hit me. Let's talk about Cal first. They returned some big-time talent. Their top passer, their top receiver, and their top rusher. Let's start with Shane Vereen because he's going to carry the load. He is going to carry the load this year. He's been living in Javid's best shadow here as the number two back. Just as talented, just as fast, explosive inside. You can see him here versus Stanford. 193 yards and three touchdowns. Gets a chance to shine for himself this year as the mainstay in that Cal running offense. All you have to do is look at the numbers towards the end of the year last season. In his final four games, he averages over 140 yards per game, and he really got the job done on the ground. But he's got help. At the quarterback position is Kevin Riley. He's the Pac-10's active leader in starts, wins, and touchdown passes, and it is his job. A bit tumultuous for his career here. You can see last year, 62% in the wins, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. In the losses, only four. 46% and an upside down ratio. He has been declared the guy this year. Tedford said he's the guy. He's got to be the leader of this team. For this UC Davis Aggies team, a proud tradition. They've won in 38 of their last 40 seasons of college football, but they have a red shirt freshman who starts at the most important position on the field. Tell me about Randy Wright. Good quarterback. Got to see his Division Three state championship playoff game versus St. Bonaventure. Extremely poised. His high school coach, one of the things he said, extremely poised in the pocket. He makes the right reads, makes good decisions on when to get out of the pocket, has a great arm, and you see him here kicking the ball, too. He's now the holder for Davis, but he can kick the ball as well. He's a versatile athlete, a competitor. Coach Biggs likes him. Said he'd normally feel uncomfortable with a young guy, but not with Wright. No, not at all. They have not shortened the playbook. They've thrown the whole ball of wax at him. Ready today. It has been 71 years since Cal and UC Davis have strapped it onto the football field. The kickoff is on the way on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Cal football on Comcast Sportsnet, California is brought to you by Bank of the West, a proud sponsor of Cal Athletics. Your Northern California Toyota dealers. More people say yes to Toyota than any other brand in California. Learn why at your Toyota dealer today. And by Sutter Health, with you for life. Oh, we are ready for college football today. UC Davis in town. They sold all 5,000 tickets. They expect over 12,000 wearing the Aggies colors as they take on Cal. Always a great, boisterous crowd and always great on the sidelines. The third member of our crew, Dan Dibley. Thanks, Jim. A great debut today. Cal's hoping for Keenan Allen, the number five recruit in all the nation. A true freshman out of North Carolina. He'll start at wide receiver today. He's a kid who can do so many things, though. He'll return kicks. We won't see him play defense, but he had eight interceptions as a senior to go along with 53 touchdowns. He is an All-American at a high school. He's expected to do big things. His quarterback, Kevin Riley, already showing faith in him, saying, quote, he's mature and he's ready, guys. Dan, thanks very much. The head coach, Jeff Tedford, his ninth season at Cal. 
You look at what he has done at this school, it has been miraculous. Seven straight bowl appearances in which he is 5-2. and two. He's been in the top ten at some point in five of the last six years. Right now is the golden era of Cal football. Yeah, 67 wins. That's huge. He's about to pass Pappy Waldorf, one of the all-time legends in Cal history, as a, to be the second winningest coach of all time here. A great record for Coach Tedford. On the other side, UC Davis Aggies. They've had this man standing on the sideline for now his 18th season. Bob Biggs, at one time a quarterback at UC Davis. This guy is someone who is special to the Davis community. Is the uh, Great West conference coach of the year from 2009 but he's been part of that great winning tradition exactly and davis very cognizant about hiring from within hiring family keeping players that turn to coaches that then become the head man you know coach biggs also second winning as coach in that program's history so both of these coaches are very good coaches here today Giorgio Tavecchio puts the ball in the air, and the 2010 college football season is underway. The return by Josh Reese, a 23-yard return, and the Aggies will have the football from their own 24-yard line. And here's the redshirt freshman, Randy Wright. Now, oh, this Aggies team, they are prepared for this game because they know 60,000 fans will be screaming down on this guy. So they practice with a silent cadence. They practice with a first-team defense to get the pace of the game up. So we'll see how the redshirt freshman responds early. They'll go to the air. Complete to the tight end, Dean Rogers, and he has a first down for UC Davis. And let's look at that Aggies offensive scheme. And these are the guys they'll throw at you. Good, solid offensive front. But the skill guys you'll hear from, and the tight end is Dean Rogers. He'll play some fullback. They'll split him out wide. Josh Reese is one of the running backs. Brandon Tucker as well. And you think guys should get hit early, right? Well, especially young quarterbacks. You need to get into the game. You need to get a little physical play. You need to get that adrenaline out of your system so that you can calm down and make plays. And as a quarterback, I always like to get hit first kind of get your head racked a little bit and get you into the game right away and a first down and a completion for the redshirt freshman this is Dean Rogers in motion and now the give to the back and Reese is into the line and he gets spun down this is the defense that the Aggies will be going against on this Saturday and it's a solid one it's a 3-4 base last year they forced 21 turnovers Cameron Jordan one of the defensive ends he will be the guy that they look at to take over for Tyson Alu Alu the linebackers are good but Mike Muhammad is the big name number 18 he led the Pac-10 in tackles with 112 and the safeties Chris Conti and John Josh Hill, very solid in the quarterbacks of this defense. You're going to need some new names to step up and some big names like Mike Muhammad to be the player he was again last year in this new system. Three receivers set. Reese the lone back. Right to the air, underneath. Pass is complete to Credit, the wide receiver, and Sean Credit, who's a solid player. He's one of the captains on this team, a 6'1 senior. He had 39 catches a year ago, his first of 2010. The thing about Coach Pettigrass' new 3-4 defense is they're always really going to bring four. It's going to depend on where they're coming from. When we talked to Coach Biggs during the week, he said, you know, that's the question about this defense. you got to figure out who that fourth guy is. Coach Pendergrass, a bit of a pressure guy, a zone pressure guy. He's going to make quarterbacks think, and we're going to see if this young quarterback is quick on his feet mentally as well as physically today. They move right to the shotgun formation. On third down and six. They're bringing a couple, and the redshirt freshman gets away under pressure. Throws on the run. Incomplete. He was able to dance away, still got knocked to the turf, but the Cal pressure defense gets going, and the fans like what they see. Very nice job escaping the pocket, but you're going to see pressure coming off that outside, making Wright feel like he's going to scram, but it has to get out of the pocket. When we talked to Coach Pendergrass, they said, you know, we think he may be on the move. He may get out a little bit. We're going to try to contain him. He got outside that time, but no damage. A good job by the young quarterback finding a way to get away from the rush. Colton Schmidt averaged 30. 39 yards per punt a year ago for the Aggies. Steps into one and sends it in the direction of Jeremy Ross, who makes a fair catch near the 25. A punt of just 33 yards, and the Aggies will give the ball over to Cal. 
where they are ready to go behind Kevin Riley. This is without question his team, the 6'2 senior, who's the active leader and starts touchdown passes and wins. And his numbers for his career, 37 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. Well, you point out he has good stats coming back this year. It's been a bit up and down as much psychological as anything, but they've worked on his mechanics in the offseason. And if his accuracy improves, that will help the psychology of his game as well. It's Riley all alone. They split Shane Vereen as a wide receiver, and they throw underneath to Marvin Jones. And he picks up seven on the play, the 6'2 junior, who will be the go-to guy on the receiver core. And that's one area, Mike, where I think it was both Andy Ludwig and Jeff Tedford who told us, I think the receivers are the area where a lot of people don't give the, the Cal Bears credit. Absolutely. There's a lot of inexperienced guys in there, but Marvin Jones, he's your leader on that receiving core. Keenan Allen, a great young talent coming in, a great tight end, and Anthony Miller. And you're going to see some new faces there that are going to add depth, add speed, and add some explosiveness to that receiver core. Yeah, they have three tight ends Anthony Miller Lardner and Sparks that they all like but this is Shane Vereen tried to bounce to the outside and got bumped down just shy of the first down and for the Aggies they'll have to follow number 34 all afternoon long defensively for this team they're without their best down lineman and Jacob Maxson he has a high ankle sprain so Brock Galvin gets the start in his place the linebackers are led by Dozy Amajoy comes from a defensive family his brother brother Cheeky plays for Stanford and the safeties are good. Danny Hart and Kevin Lewis, those are also quarterbacks in this Aggie defense. Third and short. Vereen, first down. Now tries to fight off the man, but Danny Hart, the free safety, came up and ushered him out of bounds. He bounced out to the 44. Point of attack is the key. Cal, a big outside zone running team. They want to get the ball to the edge, especially with the speed of a guy like Shane Vereen. Good job getting a hat on a hat on the outside and let your talented running back pick his lane. Well, it's that offensive line that will be looked at all season long. This is an offense for Cal that has eight starters returning. And all eyes will be on the lead back, Shane Vereen. Out of the shotgun again. It's Vereen, and he just hugs that line and moves forward a couple of yards before he gets swamped under pressure. As the Aggies try to bury the football, you're always going to see a couple of guys. It's a good team at gang tackling. Bobby Erskine was in on the stop. Erskine, a 6'3 sophomore. Last year, he was a linebacker. They convert him to end. How difficult is that move? Well, you know, he's an athlete out there. Coach Biggs told him, we think he could be pretty special as an end. He'd be a good linebacker, too, but they thought he could be special as end. So being a team player, he took the move, and he's really evolving into a good defensive end. Timeout, California. That's their first charge timeout. So the Bears call time while they have the football, and Jeff Tedford will talk it over with his quarterback. No score from Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. It's the Aggies and the Bears. Tomorrow, the Oakland Athletics close out their three-game set with the Los Angeles Angels. Vin Mazzaro takes to the hill for the A's. Irvin Santana throws for the Halos. Coverage starts 12.30 p.m. with A's pregame live. It's A's baseball, and it's only on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Cal Bears with the football. College football season is here. Well, the fans are ready for this. Players are ready for this as well, aren't they, Mike? Absolutely. You know, you go head-to-head -head with your teammates for so long. You just wait for somebody else to play against to see if it all works out for you to see what your team actually looks like. Spencer Lardner, the tight end, in motion. And then the ball is down. And it is loose, and the UC Davis Aggies say they've got the football. We'll wait for the official signal, but the Aggie fans are excited in Berkeley as they have come away with a game first turnover last year this defense for 17 but one in the first quarter of their first game you know we saw some balls on the ground from that cal side prior to the game and you look it just got punched out right guard justin cheadle as he pulled across punched it directly out of kevin riley's hand you can't put that on kevin he's got to try to get it back quickly but sometimes those guards come through and knock it out remember the bears called the timeout to get to that play 
that's not what you want to see coming back off the timeout. It was Bobby Erskine with the recovery and good field position for this Aggies team as they give to Reese, and he gets rocked at the line of scrimmage. In fact, someone lost a hat down there. Cameron Jordan lost the helmet. He's big and strong, the 6'4 senior at 283 pounds. Boy, he got a good shot at the running back. Reese just trying to find that middle, that cutback hole up front. And an outstanding play on the inside. Follow your blocker. Let him take you to the point of attack on the play. Cameron Jordan playing it exactly how you're supposed to. 48 tackles a year ago. Six sacks for him. But Erskine is on the bench with that defense as they came away with the game's first turnover. No gain last play. And now the quarterback, Randy Wright, not certain what to do. So he calls timeout. And he'll go over and talk to Bob Biggs and try to organize here. Second down, and he's a little confused for a young quarterback. Is this the smart play for him? Oh, absolutely. You don't go into it. If you're not sure what's going on out there, you got to settle yourself down, call that timeout, come back to the sideline, get square with your coaches. There's a lot of checks, a lot of things going on. We talked about this 3-4 defense. Their whole concept is to confuse you, to send people from different positions, to give you different looks. So as a quarterback, you have to adjust on the run. Coach Biggs knew this about his young quarterback. He said, this kid is a very good decision maker. He's going to grow into the position. He said, I don't, he's not a leader yet, but this is a guy that's going to quickly become a leader because of his temperament. UC Davis Aggie's not afraid to go out and play some big name programs. They played Boise State deep. They won in their last game against a Pac-10 opponent. Second down. Predick in motion, the leading wide receiver who returns this year. Nice screen for Reese. He stumbles down at the 40 after a pickup of three. And now here's what we're talking about, Mike. It was against the Stanford Cardinal when the UC Davis Aggies made their mark. Down on the farm, getting pumped up for this game. Nobody gave him a chance going in. But Davis just kept coming, kept playing, kept playing hard. John Grant in there at that quarterback position, throwing the winning touchdown pass. A huge win for Davis. Talked to Coach Biggs. He said there was only like 15,000 people in the stands. But when you talk to people now, it seems like there was 100,000 at the game. Yep, absolutely. Every former Aggie was there to see it live and in person. And here they are on third down. Right, pushed out. Smart play. He picks up a couple. He's shy of the first down. So he's better on his feet as a young quarterback, not afraid to tuck the football and get out and run. Well, a good decision. That's one of the things Coach Biggs said. He has a good sense of when to leave the pocket and when not to. You have three guys like Ernie Owusu coming at you. You're going to get out of the pocket right now as a quarterback. Get what you can and get down. Give your team a chance. Whatever you do, don't make a bad mistake and throw it away. Smart play by a young quarterback. Colton Schmidt on the punt last year. He sent 19 punts inside the 20. This one gets to the end zone, and the Bears will have it from their own 20-yard line. A net 17-yard punt. No score from Berkeley. The Aggies and the Bears doing battle. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Scoreless midway through the first quarter. Dan Dibley here on the sideline. A lot of talk in the offseason about Jeff Tedford making a change this year. A kinder, gentler coach Tedford. Maybe Ted 2.0. Bob Marley being played at practice. Offense and defense playing in fun competitions against each other. Even today we saw non-kick returners returning punts in pregame. But I don't know if the kinder, gentler approach is going to last much longer, guys, after a sluggish start. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Dibs. I think you're going to see Jeff Tedford go back to the old Jeff Tedford here if they don't start moving the football a little bit better. Their second possession of the ball game. Shane Vereen able to get outside. Makes two players miss. He's across the 30. A first down pickup for the Bears and a gain of 11 yards. Yeah, just to pick up on what Dibbs was saying, you know, this year Cal has actually changed their practice schedule. They're practicing early in the morning to give the kids more time. See a little counter tray here. Vereen coming off the inside, counter motion, starting left, coming back to the right, and finding a way, picking a hole for himself. Let the fast guy run on the outside. That's the kind of chunks that Cal's looking for in their running game. Andy Ludwig, offensive coordinator, said, we just need to take care of our business. And they just started on that play. With Vereen off the field, E.C. Sofele, the running back, and they split him wide left. Riley, complete underneath. Jeremy Ross. 
pass, and he has a first down for the Bears. The 5'11 senior and the offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig saying this is the best that this guy has looked since he has come to Cal. He's big and strong. He's fast as well. Clocked at a 4.39 in the 40. He's been extremely talented his whole career here, but he's really underproduced. And Coach Ludwig said the coaches actually came out and challenged him this year and said, this is your year. You see Coach Ludwig on the left wearing the glasses. This is your year to shine. We challenge you. And he has stepped up to the challenge. Two plays, two first downs for the Bears. The officials stop play, flag down. We'll let them sort it out. Ball, false start, 57, offense, five yard penalty, makes first down. That's Brian Schwinky, the 6'2 sophomore, making his first start for the Cal Bears. And it's that first game jitters. You know, as coaches, they expect a few miscues, but you don't want it to be all about miscues. A little nervous, trying to get up. He obviously had an assignment he was trying to get to, got off early. Coach Tedford wants to get those things ironed out here early on in the season. And he likes Schwenke. He pointed out that he's among the most athletically gifted offensive linemen that he's going to have on this Cal team. But that pushes the ball back five yards, first down and 15. Green on the field. He's open in the flat. And then he gets shoved out. Tackled by Marcus North, the senior for this Aggies defense. Now, North is an interesting story. He's been injured almost his entire career, but he might be the best corner on the field for the Aggies. Yeah, very gifted if he can stay on the field. That's the big key for him. You know, a few guys that have been bitten by the injury bug. You think about him, a guy not playing today, Joe Trombetta, was a star back. We saw him as a true freshman playing for the Aggies. They've had some of that injury bug there. And when you don't have as many scholarships, depth is an issue. Well, athletically, they went to camp with nine running backs, UC Davis did, and they were down to four and five because of injury. A pass out to the true freshman, Keenan Allen, his first touch, and it's an explosive one. He's into Aggies territory. A big game for the true freshman, Keenan Allen. That is the cut that's known as the what <laughs> inside watch him just give him he sticks his foot in the ground and makes the cut right here bam plant that left foot and he is unstoppable what a move Jonathan Calhoun trying to make the tackle out there just unable to move at the same speed Allen showing right there why the coaches are so high on him Jeff Tedford said this is what they look like. When he talked about him as a receiver, he said, this guy is what they look like. A 17-yard pickup. Riley turns and moves his backfield, and that means Eric Stevens off to the left. They give to the back Shane Vereen. He's knocked down at the 40. They get back to Keenan Allen, and I asked Coach Ted for, I said, is he about as good as it gets when you bring, bring a guy in here at Cal? And then he started to name the guys he's had at yeah. Cal, and you start to realize yeah. how much talent Jeff Tedford oh, has they, brought to this they program. They have had some tools. Think of Javid Bass. I mean, even Shane Vereen, who's down here, fantastic player. Uh, Marshawn Lynch. I mean, you can go back. There have been guys that have come through this program who have been absolutely phenomenal. And another receiver who's in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles as well who could play just a little bit. Just a bit. Second down. Inside handoff. This goes to Safele. He bounces outside for the first down and then gets thrown to the ground. That's a good run by the 5'7", 186-pound sophomore that made the most of his time in camp. Another guy they really like. Safele stepped up huge this year. Came into the program weighing just under 160, but worked hard in the weight room. He's now benching 355 pounds. The strongest man, pound for pound. And then Shane Vereen was injured a little bit. Had a little bit of a tweak hammy early in camp. That gave Safele a chance to shine in fall camp this year, and he took advantage of it. He stepped ahead of Kovan Dabosky johnson and DeSarte Yarnway. And he had a nice pickup right there, a 17-yard run. Out of the shotgun, Riley with a pump fake. Going to the end zone, Shane Vereen! Touchdown, Cal Bears! And he really had it both ways. Going down the middle, he had his tight end out there, Spencer Ladner, and then Shane Vereen with a little out and up on the sideline. Just a two-vertical route. You're going to see Ladner coming here on the corner route. Vereen to the outside. Either way, Riley wanted that one. He had it, but he found Vereen wide open in that back corner. That is execution. 
And that is what Coach Ludwig was talking about when he said, we need to take care of our business. Giorgio Tavecchio on for the point after. It is good. The Cal Bears march right down the field. 80 yards in eight plays in just under four minutes. And Shane Vereen, who scored two in the air last year, gets one in the first for Cal in 2010. A 23-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Riley to Shane Vereen for Riley. His 38th career touchdown pass. Cal Bears lead 7-0. Great seats still available for all Cal football home games. Great matchups, including UCLA, Oregon. Of course, the big game with Stanford coming into Memorial Stadium. Visit CalBears.com today to get the best seats at the very best price. You can sit next to that crew. They got all the inside on Pokemon and everything going on down there. You'd be golden. Look out, man. Look out. They are ready young. Cal Bears leading 7-0. Aggies ready to get the football. On the run up, Brandon Tucker tried to angle to his left, just across the 20, bounced to the 22. A return of nine. Familiar name there on the tackle, Will Cap. Remember Joe Cap, the quarterback that played here. A nice family relation coming back into the game. Let's say if you're a Cal fan, you probably you better know the name. You better know the name. Yeah, so Cap, Cap means something around here. Yes. You're talking about a legend. 1959 Rose Bowl, former coach. Yeah, these fans, the smart group they got up here at Berkeley. They do a great job. And now they want to see a better 2010 after an 8-5 and five year last year and a trip to the Poinsettia Bowl. For the UC Davis Aggies, they were up, off a winning season as well. Here they throw to the tight end underneath. Dean Rogers cannot hold on. Incomplete. The second down coming up. And for UC Davis, they started last year with another one of those games. It's a big game for them. They were at Fresno State last year. They, had, they got taken out behind the woodshed a year ago. But that doesn't happen very often with about big State. No, it doesn't. And, and you mentioned it. Boise State, very good. TCU, they played really well. Kind of lost their grip at the end. It's a very good, well-coached football team. They keep things in front of them on defense, and their offense executes. Now, they may get out-athleted from time to time in those big games, but they won't be out-coached. A delay. They give up the middle. Josh Reese. He gets maybe a couple, a pickup of two. Third down coming up for the UC Davis Aggies. We showed you the video of them winning at Stanford a few years ago. On that day, they traveled on the day of the game. They did the same today. But right now, all their traveling they're doing on the ground, all they're doing is running into big pockets of blue. A lot of hats around the football, yeah. boy. That's what you want to see as a defensive coordinator. You want to see all your guys getting in there on the tackle, getting their hats on them. A lot of congestion down there. Third and long coming up. They split Credic wide right, and here comes the blitz. The pass to Credic incomplete through his hands, and he got clocked in the secondary. The hit by Chris Conti, the senior, as he really laid it on the wide receiver. You got a blitz you see coming off the outside. Safety blitz, Credic running a nice route, but you have to make that catch. I know you're going to pay for it, but you have to bring that ball down. Credic has been living in the shadow himself. They had Chris Grant, uh, excuse me, Chris Carter and Bakari Grant, two great wide receivers at Davis. Time for Credic to step up, and he has to start by making those catches. Bakari Grant recently in the 49ers training camp. He was just cut a week ago. Big booming punt. Ross leaps over two men to the 40, tries to cut back. An exciting explosive return of 18 yards after a 50-yard boot by Colton Schmidt. That was an outstanding return by Ross, but watch up front. Eric Stevens maintaining this block long enough to have Ross figure out where he wants to go. That is an athletic play by a fullback up front. And then, of course, the explosiveness that we talked about with Jeremy Ross. 4-3, big vertical jump, strong in the weight room. He's everything you want to see in a receiver. If he gets consistent this year, he can make a lot of noise. Anthony Miller, the tight end, moves to the right side. And Cap now the fullback. He'll be the blocking back as Riley rolls. 
is complete near sideline. The true freshman, Keenan Allen, his second catch of his career. And what athleticism by Jeremy Ross. I can see you doing this, Coase. I mean, coming outside, making a big jump. And, and the thing is, it's not just an issue of being able to jump like that. It's knowing when to jump like that. Because I've tried that a couple times, and it never seemed to work out for me. <laughs> Jumping people wasn't really my no, forte, wasn't it? Between that and Keenan Allen's cut earlier today, my knees are starting to hurt from sitting here. Riley's had a good day. The quarterback for Cal, 6 of 6 with a touchdown. Check it inside there. Short drop. Complete. Marvin Jones. And he's wrapped up. It's a good job on the corner by Jonathan Calhoun who made the tackle, and he stopped the very athletic Marvin Jones on the outside. Now, when it comes to quarterbacks, you look at Riley and some of the numbers that he has put up. Well, look who he's starting to catch when it comes to all-time touchdown passes. Those first two guys, Bowler, Rodgers. Look at that Look at that number seven guy on the list. He might get caught today. Just might. Huh? Just might. Might not get down there. You might go play a little defense. You know, that wasn't a record. At the time, I had a single-season record. But those are all made to be broken, and with offenses evolving the way they are, you know, Riley has done some fantastic things here. We talked to Coach Tedford about it yesterday. You look at his numbers, and you go, wow, the numbers are pretty good. And when you watch game film as a player, it's never as good as you thought it was, and it's never as bad as you thought it was. But the negatives have kind of stood out for Kevin Riley, and it wasn't his fault necessarily. The team had a lot to do with that, but he needs to overcome that. And they said this year his toughness has really evolved. Andy Ludwig said he has just got this attitude that I don't care about what's going on on the outside. It's about me and my team, and I'm going to lead this squad. Green on the delay. Breaks through the line. But then the linebackers and safeties come up, and also from the corner, Marcus North got a hat on him. Pick up on the play of five. On the inside, little trap block kicking out. You clear for your tailback, try to let him get his space. Find a hole and get down. Good job by Vereen running inside the tackles. We think of these fast guys. And again, Vereen was number two in the state of California his senior year in the 100 meter. So very fast. We think of him as an outside runner. He's also very strong between tackles. This is Allen. Wrapped up. That's a good play by Marshall Congdon, the linebacker. He got the start in this game today. The Elk Grove, California native went to Sheldon High School. He hung right in there, wrapped up the freshman, and made the stop. And that, that's what linebackers have to do. They have to, it's called reading and scraping. You read, you scrape along the line of scrimmage, you find the hole, then you plug that hole. Excellent job of recognition by Congdon, and a good job getting to the point of attack. Shane Vereen over at the sideline, getting some instruction. He is always ready to learn. Cal in the first quarter. It's a touchdown pass from Kevin Riley to Shane Vereen. One quarter is over. The Bears lead 7-0 on UC Davis. Second quarter on the way. Comcast Sportsnet, California. Mike Pulaski, I'm Jim Cosimo, Dan Dibley works the sidelines. All the pageantry of college football Saturday right there. You've got to love weekends in the fall. College football, America's sport. It's just my favorite brand of football, college football. Still young kids doing it for the love of the game, the passion of the game. Kevin Riley, how about talking about passion there? Seven for seven and a tug. That's pretty consistent. Not a bad start to his 2010. Sixth play of the drive, first play of the second quarter. Shane Vereen's had a busy day, and he gets driven down by Dozy Amajoy, a 6'1 senior. He comes from a family of defensive players. We mentioned Cheeky, who plays with Stanford as a linebacker. He had a brother, Obi, who was a corner at Cal. But he was an offensive guy in high school. He ran for over 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns as a senior at Aquinas High School in San Bernardino. Yeah, it was actually All-State, both offensively and defensively, a very good football player. Bob Bix really likes him inside of that linebacker spot. Riley to the end zone. Touchdown, Marvin Jones! Lance Post on the outside. Take your five steps and 
deliver the ball. Watch Marvin Jones. One quick jab to the outside. Riley, one, two, three, four, five. Stick your foot in and deliver the ball. This is a timing route. Single step to the outside. Take that middle and look for the football. Get your head around quickly, just like an out route. All timing. Point after good by Giorgio Tavecchio. 14-0 start for the Cal Bears. Two touchdown passes for Kevin Riley. And boy, did he throw this one right there. Right there. Right where he had to. And again, your guy's going into the end zone. You get him down. You put that ball down low. Let your receiver feel safe going down to get it. Nice pass and catch on the outside. And again, that is one of the hardest routes to get timing on that glance post because there's so many different options at the top of that route the receiver can take. As a quarterback, you've got to expect him to be somewhere to be able to adjust on the step. Ah, the fans are starting to enjoy themselves. Marvin Jones, who had six touchdowns last season, has his first of 2010. And we talked about his speed with Jeff Tedford yesterday, and we talked about game speed, and then there's clock speed. Yes. Explain that. Well, you think about guys, there's a lot of 4-3, 4-4 guys out there, if you ask them, okay? Some guys will show up as 4-3 on the clock, but won't show up as 4-3 on the field. And the trick for any player, no matter what it is, from offensive line to fullback, you've got to be who you are. Marvin Jones is not a 4-3 guy. He's probably a 4-5 guy, but he plays at that speed every single snap, and so you know what you're going to get. Well, it comes down in the direction of Brandon Tucker, the senior, to the 24-yard line, and then a late flag goes down. Let's see about the celebration. You're a quarterback. Is this is this starting to be his? Uh, is this his 2010 thing? You got a little dance going there. Got a little love working. You know, one of the big things about early games is you got to build that confidence up. These guys got a little dance working. Offensive linemen need some love. Your quarterback paying them attention. You got to nurture those relationships with your offensive linemen. So Riley coming over and giving those guys some love because he's going to get the attention. But the offensive line needs some loves too. That's smart play. That is That's smart play. Smart on the throw. Smart after to go over and find the right guys to celebrate with. The big boys are going to be protecting you. You want to celebrate with them. Well, Jeff Tedford was hoping that the experience that Kevin Riley had coming into the season was going to pay off. It is shown to start the game. But now it's time for a redshirt freshman to do something. After the holding penalty, the Aggies have the ball from their own 10. In motion, Josh Reese. Short drop. Ball got punched out on the throw, and it was behind Dean Rogers, the tight end. I believe it was Aaron Capote got his hand up there and made the tip on that play. You can see him coming from that middle spot. Just gets a big old paw up there. Ends up behind Dean Rogers. Nice job by that defensive line. If you can't get to the quarterback, then you try to get into his passing lane. Rogers did a good job to knock it away. DJ Holt, the linebacker, is right there, and the ball is deflected actually closer to the inside linebacker. This 3 4 scheme run by the Bears. And Holt, one of those inside backers. Now, you just don't know where that fourth guy is going to come from. Second down and long to the ground. Reese. Short gain for the interior of that line. They are defensively for this Cal Bears team. They are moving upfield and they're doing it quickly. And then the linebacker, Michael Kendricks, comes in to make the stop. And that's part of the defensive scheme. You've got the interior guys who are going to take on the linemen, and then the linebackers have to step right up. Yeah, you always want those guys up front to at least occupy the offensive line so that your linebackers can make play. If your D-line isn't penetrating and making the play in the backfield, then they at least have to occupy one of the big bodies to allow the athletes behind them to make their plays. See Mark Toss on the outside there getting rolled up on a little bit. Dangerous being an offensive lineman standing around the pile. He's got the leg brace on. Those knee braces have saved a lot of knees over the course of the last 10 years. He's a preseason All-American, Mark Toss was, replaced by Reggie Mason, a 6'4 senior, on third and long, and he'll get tested out of a shotgun formation. Three receiver set. Lone back is Reese. Again, arm hit, and Mike Muhammad almost came away with his seventh career interception. And Randy Wright is getting an early lesson from this Cal Bears defense. Tough when you feel like you're under siege back there as a quarterback. 
you'd like as a coach to allow the game to slow down for a young quarterback. Right now, this game's moving about 500 miles an hour right into Randy Wright's face. And the Cal defense doing a good job of bringing it, of turning that speed up. It's all about speed. And the redshirt freshman under siege. That's a good punt out of his own end zone by Colton Schmidt. But Jeremy Ross turns it upfield, makes the move 30. And finally pulled down by the next to last man on the chart. Steven Dunstan made the stop after a 34-yard punt return by Jeremy Ross. Seeing some of that explosiveness. You know, Coach Big said he likes to spread punt because it gives him better coverage lanes. But Jeremy Ross making the first man miss and then making something happen with that explosive speed on the outside. Nice job returning the football. A lot of that, his own personal effort. You just scored. You have a big play on special teams. Do you go to the air right out of the shoot? Yeah, I would go to the air if I'm the coach. Try to go downfield and get something done. But again, the Bears being very effective right now running the ball as well. And Shane Vereen right up the middle. They push him back somewhat. But they keep it on the ground. Shane Vereen so important to this offensive attack. But do they need to find someone else who can carry the ball out of the backfield? Can they rely on this game guy for a full season? Well, Tedford has always had two guys, no matter where he was. At Oregon, here at Cal. He's always had that one-two punch. Uh, you think back throughout his whole career, he's had some great ones. Last year, he had Best and Vereen together, so he likes the one-two back. They're going to use Cefali as that number two back this year. And last year, when Best went down, Vereen was ready to step up. It gives you that kind of depth. Keenan Allen, the true freshman on the near side. And he goes in motion. And they give to him. And now he's trying to wait and see what he can do. Turns up field. Now against the grain, and it's a sprint. Keenan Allen, true freshman, true touchdown. His first for the Cal Bears. A little bit of a flashback there. You think of Deshaun Jackson versus Tennessee. Right now, Keenan Allen coming out making a big statement that he can play at this level. This was going to be a pass. So, a couple of great decisions here. He looked downfield, didn't have anybody. He tucked the ball away and then found the lane to cut back and get positive yardage. Look, Kevin Riley out front trying to pick up a block for him. Not bad. Excellent athletic play, outstanding mental play as well. Hey, it goes down as an 18-yard touchdown run. But he took a circuitous route to get there. His first touchdown in a Cal Bears uniform. Keenan Allen, and it's 21-0, Cal. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the history and the traditions of the Pac-10. Champion, it's how you play. Oh, they're playing for real. Oh, yeah. They're, they're ready to go. They're in midseason form, the fans at Cal. What a great atmosphere. Expecting over 60,000. And the fans here to see the Bears should be happy. They lead 21-0. And on the other side, you see Davis. Even their fans, they're very happy. They were expecting over 12,000. And, of course, Tightwad Hill, that's always good. Always going to be packed. Those guys up there without a ticket. But Davis, yeah, they got to sell 5,000 of their own tickets. And then people came to Cal to buy some tickets to get here as well. Nobody wanted to miss this one. Coach Fick said this was a big game. The alumni, probably 50,000 alumni, wanted to come. Yep. Having some problems putting the ball up on the team. A little bit of wind going out there, but I don't think that should have a, an effect on it as Giorgio Tavecchio lines it up and back deep to receive. We've got Elon Wyatt, number six. He is back along with Brandon Tucker. Tavecchio getting a workout between points after and kicking off. Wyatt from the two. To the 17, Davis will have it from there. Let's go out on the field. Dan Dibley. Jim, you talked about the freshman quarterback, Randy Wright, out of Santa Rosa, stepping in for Greg Denham, who left the team to pursue a career in the ministry. The junior quarterback had an incredible year last year. Second team, all-conference, nearly 3,000 yards, almost 20 touchdowns, but he said he had to go pursue his calling. He said, quote, I have to be true to myself and my faith, and ultimately, at the end of the day, you can't fault a guy for pursuing what he truly believes in, guys. 
Dibs, thanks very much. And he was such a great quarterback for UC Davis going into his senior year. He had thrown for over 6,000 yards and 46 touchdowns, but a higher calling was there. A screen pass for Josh Reese, and he gets lifted off the ground by Mike Muhammad and then thrown down a big, hard tackle made by the guy who led the Pac-10 in tackles a year ago. Let's get back to Greg Denham. You saw him play. Yeah, this guy had some skills. Very good quarterback. You'll get him almost 62%, 19 touchdowns. He was second team all-conference last year. You know, the, the unfortunate part about it for Coach Biggs is that it happened over the summer, so it's kind of hard to put a guy through practice as a, as a number one guy. Randy Wright will step up, but, you know, as Dibbs pointed out, the guy gets a call, and he gets a call, and that's what you do. Coach Biggs handling it with class and the team liking their new quarterback. Eight-yard pickup on first down. He has pressure, throws long in the direction of Tom Hemmingson, a redshirt freshman from Danville, went to Monta Vista High School, but maybe just throwing it because the pressure was getting too tough. Well, his eyes drop. You know, as a quarterback when you're back there, you want to feel comfortable looking down the field. And Coach Pendergrass told us yesterday, at some point, you got to get the quarterback to drop his eyes to bring him down. You do that with the rush. And right now, Randy Wright is thinking about that bare front seven. Bob Biggs said he was going to keep the regular game plan. He's not going to put the kid gloves on his young quarterback. He's got to be ready to play. In motion, Anthony Soto on third down. They throw to Soto. It is incomplete. Soto thought he had the catch and had rolled over and just dropped the football to place it down. The official right in front of him signaled incomplete pass and another punting down. Just a quick out. You see Soto going down and putting the ball in the... Well... Uh, you know, if, if the ball hits the ground, bounces back up, it's loose. That's that's no catch. You have to continue that catch all the way through. So good call by the official right on the spot. The Aggies now 0 for 5 in third down conversion, so they'll punt the football as Colton Schmidt will undoubtedly get some pressure here. Low boot. Good bounce, but Ross is going to stay away, or is he? No, he's going to take it. He does so just inside the 20-yard line where Cal will have the football. A 55-yarder with the kind bounce for Colton Schmidt. Effective boot for Schmidt. Nice job of Jeremy Ross by not letting it get downfield. You know, you think about the Cal offense. They've always been very balanced. You look at their per-game average rushing and passing, a very nice mix back and forth. Last year, a little more on the passing side. They, they want to get to be a really well-balanced team this year. They're going to depend on their quarterback, but they're going to also go with the running game. You have to be able to run the football to win, and the Bears will look for that. Well, we asked offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig about that yesterday. He said, we want to be 50-50. We've got enough talent to do that. And here, Riley to the air, going long. He's got Marvin Jones, who makes what the catch, catch, even though he was interfered with. What a miraculous grab with a body all over him. The flags are down, but the catch will stand. A 51-yard pitching catch. Wow, Marvin Jones had Marcus North beat over the top. Riley underdrew that ball a little bit. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. That penalty is declined. First down. Marvin Jones outside just running that deep post route. He runs so well. And North looks like a bear trying to scratch at a cover to get some honey out right there, doesn't he? <laughs> great catch, great concentration by Marvin Jones. One thing Andy Ludwig told us, he has phenomenal ball skills and will always get that ball when it's in the air. Four catches for Jones on a 9-of-9 nine nine day for the quarterback, Riley. And a little hiccup right there as he pulled away from center. I'm going to guess, and this is first game stuff, that Riley forgot the snap yeah. count on that one. He saw the blitz coming because the offensive line Starting all stayed snap, solid. Ball start, number 13 on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. He saw him pointing to himself, getting upset. I've done this, so I understand it. All these guys stay steady. This guy is pulling out. Uh-oh. Your quarterback forgot the snap count because he saw pressure coming at him. Usually coming out of the huddle as a quarterback, you have all the big guys going, what's it on? What's it on? What, what's the count? What's the count? 
That time, Riley forgot the snap count as he saw pressure in his face. I think it's because he's 9 of 9. He just wants to get that ball. He's ready to rev it up and throw <laughs> again. He's all alone back there. Quick pass complete. Keenan Allen inside the 30. And look at him fight backwards towards the 25-yard line. This true freshman is playing like a five-star recruit. Yeah, he's absolutely special. Coming in as a true freshman, looking this good. Look at his tools. Now, he's a big guy. You know, you think about Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson was a smaller guy. Keenan Allen, very big. He's long. He's rangy. Great hands. Special speed. This guy is going to be a force in the Pac-10. And loves football. Loves being on the yep. field. Always has a smile on his face. He is here. He's got a half-brother, Zach Maynard, who's a transfer from Buffalo, who will play here in 2011. More to come on second down. Riley tried to set up the screen, but it was stopped nicely by the Aggies. Defense, and then the pass is knocked down. Good job by Brock Galvin. The down lineman at six foot three and a sophomore. He's a steady Eddie, according to the head coach, Bob Biggs, and he was right there to knock it down. A little front side half roll. You see, he was looking to throw back. It was a screen going back to Vereen. They were trying to get flow going one way and throw back to Vereen. But Vereen ended up getting caught up in the pile. Nice job on the outside by Brock Galvin being in on the play, being right there. He's the one that held Vereen up, and then he got the block as well. So third down. Aggies defense needs to tighten up. They trail 21-0. And now there's some movement. Riley is frustrated. Actually threw a pretty good pass to the referee. Is that going to go against Davis? 13 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Main third down. So two miscues in there. Both of those on your QB. He was trying to get things going, get guys in motion. Again, this is getting back to game management skills because although they put you on the clock in practice, they say clock's counting down, clock's and you got to get it off. Until you get in the game, it's not the same. You have to have that sense of urgency, and he's trying to get back into the game speed. That's why you play some of these early season games. Third and long. Throws to Allen. Got a hand on it. Couldn't haul it in. Would have been a phenomenal catch had he made it. About the only place that Riley could have put that ball. Nice job of coverage down the sideline. You see Allen trying to run the tightrope out there. Almost got his hands on it. But Dre Allen in coverage in perfect position. So fourth down from the 31. We're to kick a field goal. See about a 48-yarder, 47-yarder. Instead, they'll go for it on fourth down. Here comes the defense. They get to Riley, and the pass is incomplete. And that is a good job by this defense. And Andrew Benjamin, the interior lineman from Jesuit High School in the Sacramento area, got to the quarterback. Finding a way on fourth down. Great pressure by that Aggie defense. 9.36 remaining second quarter. Riley has been solid. Cal with a lead. UC Davis football tickets for the 2010 season now on sale. Come see a game of the beautiful new Aggie Stadium. Visit UCDavisAggies.com to get your tickets today. Great showing by the Aggie Pack. Over 5,000 tickets sold, and they felt they'd have over 12,000 in attendance. They really love their football. Two of three UC schools have played football on the field today. Also, UCLA being the third. But this year, I think that this team and these fans are going to have a reason to like this Aggie team. We talked to Bob Biggs about the team, and he said, you know, some teams find a way. He thinks this team is going to find a way. He just loves the team chemistry, great work ethic. They still make their off-season workouts voluntary. It's not mandatory, it's voluntary. But 60 guys showed up for the Aggies this year and worked in the off-season. He said that kind of dedication just shows up on the field. Well, you usually get seven on sevens. He said, we had so many guys, that turns into 11 on 11s. So these guys are tired of six and five, six and four, five and six seasons. They want to explode out in 2010. Randy Wright on second down. Chased out. 
Tried to throw it in to the tight end Cameron Sentence. And he's going against the tough defense, this redshirt freshman quarterback is, Randy Wright. And that defense is led by Clancy Pendergast, first year with Cal. It's a guy who's, at the NFL level, been very successful. With Kansas City last year, they forced 19 turnovers in 2009. He was with the Arizona Cardinals for five seasons with a Super Bowl team in 2008. It's a guy who learned from Denny Green. He said, you got to use the guys you have. Get a system that gets the best players on the field. Exactly. He had coached for seven years in Dallas and then at Cleveland where they were running a lot of the 4-3 systems. And then he came in with Denny Green at Arizona and Denny said, find a way to make the players you have work for you. Especially at the college level, the 3-4 makes a ton of sense because you get more athletes on the field. It's hard to find that huge defensive tackle type these days. They're just very few and far between. So if you can find one or two of those guys and you have your big nose guard type that, that you can go out there and find, now you put athletes around them in those linebacker positions. And that's how you get it done on defense. And Coach Pendergast said he really likes the 3-4. He likes what you can do with it. The, uh, there's so many different looks and so many different ways to bring people that you always leave offenses guessing. It's always interesting when you talk to coaches and what they've learned from other coaches. Who were their mentors? Or who did they pick from along the way? And he picked Denny Green. And we will step aside. Cal leading 21-0 over UC Davis. Got to show your colors when you come to a college football game, don't you? Who's got the blue light on? Those guys are just glowing. <laughs> yeah, they are. Ready to roll. Speaking of roll, Ivan Perez rolled an ankle in that last play. He was a backup center. They moved him to the left guard to start the game today. And he's on the sideline. They're going to work on that ankle. Third down and long for the Aggies. Right. Steps up. Undershot Credick. Sean Credick, the wide receiver, who was followed tightly defensively by Chris Conti. I'm not sure if he's actually throwing that to Credick or, or if he's throwing that to Rogers. Rogers on a seam here. I think Wright may have been trying to throw that to Rodgers and sit him down in the hole ahead of time. But again, young quarterback, trying to get on the same page with these guys. The game is moving very fast for Wright right now. There you see Ivan Perez getting that ankle work on. Busy day for Colton Schmidt. And a fair catch for Ross. The San Jose Earthquakes push for the playoffs. It continues next Saturday on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. The Quakes host Conference Final FC Dallas at Buckshaw Stadium. It is a pivotal matchup with two clubs that have postseason aspirations. The action starts at 7 p.m. next Saturday. It's only on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Chris Wondolowski, the crew, making a run in the West. They've had a good season so far in their third year and the Quakes are hoping to make the playoffs. They add Giovanni on a big game against Houston on Sunday. Shane Vereen right up the gut. Spins away from two tacklers. And finally, they fall on top of him. And the free safety, Danny Hart, who missed him the first time, came back to get him the second time. The reason Vereen and Best were so good as one-two punch last year is because Best gave you the explosive outside cutback, crazy triple move guy. Vereen was more of a straight ahead, put your leg in the ground and make the cut. Strong runner, downhill runner, what coaches like to see at that tailback position. It was a nice one-two punch that way, and now they've got the same thing with Safele behind him being the outside guy who's the jitterbug. Eric Stevens, the fullback behind Riley. They try to bounce outside. Guys are losing hats again. They're throwing their body around this Aggies defense. They don't want to get embarrassed, and it's not going to happen with a Bob Biggs team. Andrew Benjamin in there to make the stop. I mentioned Danny Hart, the free safety, who plays big in big games. You go back to the Boise State game a year ago. He had 14 tackles. He had 13 tackles against Southern Utah. Look at these guys go at it. They're all racking grills on the inside. That's plastic on plastic. Oh, and the helmet comes off right before your head hits hit the ground and gets buried. That's when you start getting those jerseys smearing across your face. That's not fun. Yeah, I know. Hart was starting to feel to make sure his helmet was still there. E.C. Safele in the backfield comes out. They pass underneath. Marvin Jones hit immediately by Dozy Amajoy at the 40. Is it enough to get the first down? 
And the signal is yes, move the chains. You heard the term strap it on before. Yes. All these helmets flying around the field. Now you understand what that term means. Strap it on, lock it down, and tape it up. And this gets back to what we said earlier, Mike, and that these guys have been hitting their own teammates for weeks and weeks and weeks. And finally, you get to hit someone who doesn't wear your colors, who doesn't know your play. Exactly. And actually, as an offense, when you go against your defense so much, they get to know what you're doing. They can predict. They can see it. As an offense, live fire actually becomes easier. They fake to Sofele, and then they throw to Eric Stevens. He leaps over a tackler and has a first down across midfield to the 48-yard line of UC Davis. Do you think that the wide receivers and the running backs have all the skills? How about the fullback making that move? Fullbacks are hurdling people. The name Eric Stevens may sound familiar. His brother Craig Stevens, a tight end for the Bears, now with Tennessee. Athlete on the outside. He said, Jeremy Ross ain't the only one who can do it. Let me jump somebody. There have been a lot of people jumped in this stadium. There's a picture of Russell White when he did it versus Purdue back here in the 90s. Jeremy Ross jumping people. Job and Best did it. I don't know how many times. You know, the strong safety, Kevin Lewis, is up there thinking, all right, I'm going to get a lick at a fullback. And he's going right over the top. Riley going up over the top. And the ball knocked away. Good play by the free safety, Danny Hart, to bat the ball away from Michael Calvin. Absolutely. And one of the things that Coach Biggs told us about Danny Hart is that he is never out of position. The guy always has the right leverage. He's always in the perfect position. You're never going to beat him because he's not doing his assignment. Great job covering ground from inside. Riley taking a little shot, standing in, delivering the ball. It was a good ball. Just a nice play by the free safety out there, Danny Hart. And Jordan Glass got the quarterback, but Danny Hart was a quarterback in high school at Del Oro High School. But you got those guys who have the head in the game at all times. Look at the legs working hard. So Fele took four white jerseys to finally bring down the 5'7", 186-pounder. He keeps the legs and churning. Yeah, if you go back on Danny Hart, you know, 2009 All-Great West, honorable mention, 53 tackles. You see fumble recoveries there as well. But he started his college career actually at Sac State. Transferred back out to Sierra College, then ended up at Davis. Started every game last year. You talked about his Boise State game. He is really the heart and soul of this defense. That's a Bob Vick's quote. He said, this guy is the one who runs it out there for us, the quarterback. And quarterbacks usually make good safeties if they have the tools to play. So on third down, see if the Aggie defense can crank it up again as Riley overshoots his intended receiver, Keenan Allen. And so Riley, who started the day brilliantly, he was 10 for 10 to start the day, now 11 of 16. That's right, Aggie. That's right, Aggie defense. Be proud of what you're doing. <laughs> I'm guessing that is going to be safe punt return. Keenan Allen out there trying to run the route. Riley getting rid of the ball under pressure, trying to get rid of it and figure out where his receiver was going to be. Again, Keenan Allen, just a freshman, although he got here at the beginning of summer, he and Kevin Riley still trying to get on the same page in terms of timing. Brian Anger, who averaged 42.3 yards per punt in 2009, sends one to the end zone. That is a big leg, a 46-yarder for Anger, but he couldn't drop it inside the 20. Well, Cal offensively, they got it going on to the quarterback, Kevin Riley, who was on early. He was on, very accurate, had to miss the pass at this point. Has two vertical route on the outside, take your pick, and finds Marine in the back of the end zone. And then Marvin Jones on the outside, just a glance post. And they call it a glance post, and it's supposed to be like a ricochet. Stick a foot and hit that glance. And then Keenan Allen showing sparks of greatness, potentially what this kid is going to be for this program. You see it coming out here early. He is the real deal so far. And pressure from the backside, and a sack is reported as the pressure came from Keith Browner, a 6'6 senior who has a pretty good lineage when it comes to playing football. Lots of family history in that, in that Browner family side, but Ayotte on the outside. As he 
Keith Brown are using his outside leverage, using the speed. Let's go down to the field, Dibs. What do you have for us? Well, you talk about Browners, guys, in football. If you're Keith Browner Jr., oh, the pressure. You've got a father who played in the NFL, three uncles who played in the league, a couple of other uncles who played Division One. Imagine being a kid and wearing the name Browner. You've got to come out and be all world, and this kid has so far living up to the Browner name, guys. How about that family Thanksgiving Day game that they have out in the yard before <laughs> it's turkey time, huh? Look at these guys. Wow. I mean, that, there is some some talent in the family. Huh. Look Uncle. at those schools, SC, Notre Dame, SC, Notre Dame. What are the team colors in that family game, too, huh? Yeah. You got to pick a side. You got to. Oh, that's great. Something to live up to. But like you said, most of those guys, defensive side of the ball, safeties, linebackers, now the young man played defensive line. And you asked if that carries over. Does that experience when you're young and around the game carry over for a kid? It does for a lot of guys. Andre Carter, who played defensive line here for the Bears, it carried over for him. You think of guys like Barry Ball, just being savvy about the game. But Coach Pendergast said he thought he, that Brown was mature in the game from being around it. He just needs him to step up and become the guy that he can be this year. So the Cal defense getting the job done. The Josh Reese stops for a short game. Inside of four minutes remaining in the first half, the Bears leading 21-0. Let's see if they put the punt block on here. Let's see what they do with special teams. As Colton Schmidt gets run out there one more time. His seventh punt. His average 43 yards per punt. This is a line drive, and Ross put the hand up. That's good punt coverage, though, by this Aggies team. They had a man right down there quickly. Byron Grundle was there as we get ready for halftime. You'll want to stick around with our halftime report. Dave Benz will be by with our Sportsnet Central halftime report. He'll let us know. How well do you know Kevin Riley? Some interesting uh, statistics and information about the starting quarterback. We'll have stats and more. I've got an interesting one on Kevin Riley. When he leaves college, he wants to play a character on his favorite TV show, which is It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's a true fact. As opposed to a false fact. Shane Marine. He's been the real deal. He has a touchdown catch in this game as he bounces up the middle. Well, here's another one for you. Did you know that Riley is roommates with the defensive leader in this team as well, Michael Huff? Really? The offensive and defensive guys together, really. Do they share trade secrets or do they try to keep them away from them? Oh, I think they share. It's good. You line it up, guys. So the leaders are their respective units. And you learn from one another, you share a little bit. It's team unity. And Cal has had it in training camp, and now they're having it to start the year. Riley gets clubbed as he unloads long. Ellen! Oh, man! He had a second try at it and almost came up with it. I, I tell you what's impressive about that. When that ball was in the air, I said, there's no way he's getting to that ball. He doesn't have a chance. Riley un corked it but Allen found a way to almost reel it in watch him right here stick it and put the extra gear with that ball in the air and then the leaping ability and then he's staying with it oh physical specimen Danny Hart very happy about that because that was a home run and you're right the effort that Keenan Allen gave laying flat out he makes incompletions interesting and exciting he has a touchdown in this game and an 18-yard run, but he went much longer than 18 to get it. And they actually were asking him to throw it, and he turned yeah, it up field. He's, he's going to do a lot here. He's going to have a lot of stats across the board here with the Bears. But you look at these guys, Riley and Allen, again, just getting to know each other. They've never played a game together. They've been in practice, and you've seen that speed. But that's a completely different speed than game speed. So now they're finding out where each other are on the field. Riley needs to put a little more air on that and let Keenan Allen run it down. If you look at that win chart, most wins by a school Cal. Second only to USC in recent years. Coach Tedford done a wonderful job. You know, we talked to Coach Biggs about that. And it's, it's funny how sometimes fans put blinders on. They seem to forget things. What Cal was like before Coach Tedford showed up here. He said, anybody that doesn't appreciate what Jeff's done at Cal is crazy. Tedford has been phenomenal. He's been consistent. He keeps bringing it to the bowl games. And he keeps winning games in a very tough Pac-10 conference. 
So third down coming up after the timeout. Look right, throw left. Keenan Allen on the move. First down. Now it's a sprint. Has a block from Ross. Gets another. Turns up field. Inside the 10. What a play by Keenan Allen. And did he ever use his blockers well? Exactly. A young kid understanding where his blockers were coming from. Okay, easy catch. Down the line screen. Everybody does this across the country. Find the hole behind the line. Here's the impressive point. Watch him slow down and wait for Marie to get out in front and pick up that block, pick up the extra 8 to 10 yards. Jeremy Ross out there blocking. Marie going to get out in front of him. He lets his blocking clear the way for him. Nice job of field awareness by a true freshman. A 50-yard play, and again, on a short pass, he does most of the work. And remember, they expect him to be a two-way guy before it's all said and done. Yeah, going to play some defense as well. Has the ball skills, A, to stand, stand in somebody's face and disrupt the route, but can also cover man-to-man. -man. First and goal. Green waited enough. Up the middle. Touchdown, Cal Bears. Second of the game for Green. One in the air. That's how you draw it up on the chalkboard, using some of your gadget plays, using some of your straight-ahead running, throwing the ball short, throwing it long, stretching defenses, and then just the handoff to the man. Easy as can be right there. That is playbook football for the Bears. Point after. It's 28-0 Cal Bears. First game of the year for both teams. And the Bears getting it done with the big names you expect, like Shane Vereen, but some new faces like Keenan Allen. And it's shaping up to be an exciting 2010 for Cal Bears fans. Last year, Cal 6-0 when they scored 30 points. They're at 28 already. And on six drives, four touchdowns, and two turnovers. You wonder if, if Ted 2.0, Jeff Tedford, <laughs> now is he going to focus on the four touches or is he going to look at those two turnovers? I think he's going to start to focus on both. You look at where the Bears are picked coming in this year, pick seven. The Bears have done very well when there weren't high expectations for these teams. The higher expectation teams have seemed to kind of come down a little bit. Coach Tedford trying to make this game fun again for this team. Has the word fun in the locker room. Going with the early practices to give his kids a break. Going with football Olympics towards the end of camp where he's letting the big guys throw and catch and shoot baskets. He's trying to keep this game interesting, trying to keep it fun and fresh. Elon Wyatt, his first touch. To the 10. Lost it. Ball loose. Bears think they have it. They'll keep wrestling down there in the pile. And they have it. Yes, they do. J.P. Hurl was down there. He wears the uniform number 34, same as Shane Vereen. But he was part of it. And he's the last guy off the pile. Almost kicked out right there initially by his own player. And that ball got bumped several times. But you have to lock it down as a return man and running back. Anybody who's going to carry that football, lock it in. They talk about five points of pressure. It's around the nose, four against your chest, against your bicep. Lock it down. You're two minutes and five seconds for the half. <laughs> And Cal after the turnover with Shane Vereen along back. Underneath. Pass caught tight end. Anthony Miller, a big target at six foot three. He's not going to go down easy. In fact, he's not going to go down at all, but they'll call the play dead. <laughs> Miller part of a three tight end group that Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, was very complimentary of. It's Miller, it's Spencer Ladner. It is Jarrett Sparks. He said, you're going to see a lot of combinations oh, yeah. of those three all year. Three different guys that have three different tool sets, really. Miller, big guy, great at the point of attack, excellent blocker. You'll see him in the play-action game a lot, not so much in the drop back. But he is the physical tough guy out there, the starter at that spot. 
Off the Stevens lead block. It's Marine on his feet. And so touchdown, Cal Bears. Just keep coming. Keep your feet moving. Nice job of shedding several tackles and reads that you have to wrap up on defense. There Coach Biggs said he wanted to get a lot of helmets around the ball. Well, a lot of guys got the shade read here. There's one right there. Two, three, four different tacklers missed him. Keenan Allen, the young kid coming down, getting a nice block back to the inside and clearing the way for Marine. Well executed by the Bears. Sloppy tackling by Davis. But again, early in the season, you see that in, the, in these games. You see guys that aren't wrapping up, they're just going to the hit. You have to wrap, especially somebody like Shane Marine. 30 points, the magic number a year ago, and they have reached that and more. 35 nothing, Cal in front. But when they score less, that record drops off. You look at this Cal team, and you start to think about what the future can hold for 2010 and what direction they can go. This is a team that last year gave up 24 and a half points per game. And I know in the Pac-10, there's going to be an awful lot of offense. Can they win with their defense? Can this unit perform at the level to move them up in the Pac-10? Well, last year's defensive style they are playing, they were actually very good against the run. You know, they allowed 112 per game. It was, I think, 27th in the country. But their pass defense was 111th in the country. And I think a big part of that was they weren't getting the pass rush. You know, they had the big guys up there playing a two-gap, meaning trying to control two gaps. But you don't rush very well when you're doing that. This year, they have single gap assignments. The defensive linemen get to go for the rush and make sure they secure their gap. It's going to improve the pass rush, and I think it's going to improve that defense. Josh Reese from inside his five to the 24-yard line. And to get back at that Cal defense, I mentioned their pass defense. They lost three starters from the secondary, so new faces in that secondary. They will have to take over. Josh Reese played corner last year, now free safety. Conti was a cornerback in his career earlier. Darian Hagan is out of the wing. We're going to expect more from the corner. Darian Hagan, the six-foot senior. But now it's up to uh, UC Davis to get it rolling. Offensively, Cal, no problem. First drive a little slow, but after that, they picked it up and they just marched down the field. They're executing, they're doing the things they wanted to do in their first game. Reese met at the line of scrimmage and stayed on his feet, but he got a good pop that time. Like that. Last man getting up, it was a piece of it. I think Mark Anthony put a helmet on him and then went down. He came in from the cornerback spot. And hit Josh Reese pretty good. There you see Mark Anthony. He's a physical corner making his first start of his Cal career against UC Davis, Arizona native. No tackles coming into the game in eight career games, but he was in on that one, put a hat on the guy there. Just a sophomore. He's a good athlete. They like him at that position. They expect him to perform this year. And Reese got pushed oh. back. He ran into his own offensive lineman. And that's just getting overly physical, isn't it? I mean, that's getting off the ball. Is that Coleman? The Andre, Andre Coleman, Coleman inside with a big bull rush. Watch him push into the backfield, knocking people into the ball carrier. That was a great get off. And that's the guy that we were told he's physical. He just throws guys around in practice. That's how physically strong DeAndre Coleman is. Yeah, they knew he was going to be pretty special inside. A guy like that, because he gets Robert Ayotte, you gotta, you got to use that physicality, use that full rush, use that strength, and he did that play. We are at halftime. Cal Bears have put 35 up on the board. Let's go down to Dan Dibley. He's got Jeff Ted for Dibs. Thanks a lot, Coach. Coach, five touchdowns in the first half. How do you feel about your offense so far? Well, we did some, some all right things. We turned the ball over with a fumble and had some sloppy play there with the snap count. But we still need to improve, no doubt about it. Shane Vereen with the three touchdowns. Any plans to maybe rest him in the second half, considering what he's gone through this preseason? Yeah, well, we'll probably have EC play most of the second half now. Defensively, the 3-4 adjustment, how's that working out for you? Well, so far, so good. I mean, um, you know, we've done a nice job defensively, haven't given up any big plays, and so they're playing well. We just got to keep it going. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you.
I got to say, Ted 2.0 on game day sounds a lot like Ted 1.0. <laughs> he sure does. Dave Benz ready with a Sportsnet Central update. Stats and highlights don't go anywhere. The Cal Bears, they are clicking on all cylinders, leading 35-0. Davis Aggies nothing waiting for the second half to begin and for this Cal group they have been entertained the fans have by a number of things but one that it, it's come out of nowhere maybe we should have picked it out early Mike hurdling has been big since before the start of the game look at that move you heard I went to a hockey or a fight the hockey game broke out people came to a football game and a track meet broke out and all of a sudden it's all about the high hurdles Look at that. Stevens out there hurdling, Jeremy Ross out there hurdling, the drum major out there hurdling. I think, go. I think Riley may try it himself here in the second half. Oh, if a quarterback is up in the air, that's fair game. I don't think he wants to start hurdling. I, I'm going to tell you, being up in the air is scary. You don't want to be up in the air, especially on a college football field, any football field for that matter. But the speed that guys play with these days, if you're up in the air, you're not in control of what's going to happen to you. They can hurt. All right, so he hits on his first 10 passes, and then he runs into a little bit of trouble. He was one of his next six, but a good first half for Jeff Tedford's, uh, Tedford's team. After a turnover on the first possession, they are able to move up and down the field behind Riley and behind a number of phenomenal talents. And it sounds like a big word early, but Shane Vereen showing what he can do, catching and running. And Bob Biggs, the coach of UC Davis, has got his hands full. Let's go down to Dan Dibley. He's got Coach Biggs. Yeah, Jim, uh, out of the locker room, what did you say to the kids to try to keep them in this game five touchdowns down? Well, they're smart kids. I told them we can't do anything about 35 nothing. We just got to come out in the second half, take one play at a time, see the score 0-0 zero, zero in the second half, see if we can prove his football team. Defensively, you had some good stops uh, despite having some short fields. Did you have some positive thoughts about the D? Well, they did some good things. You know, we just had left them on the field way too much. Offensively, we just haven't done anything. We haven't gotten any first downs. Defense been on the field three quarters of the time. They're going to wear down. It's a good football team we're playing. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck. Okay. Dan, thanks very much. Bob Biggs, he's a tremendous man. You get a chance to talk to him. You learn so much about the game. You learn so much about his team, how much he respects all the players that he has in that roster. He really cares for them. And when he found out that his senior quarterback, Greg Denham, was going to leave the team to enter the ministry, I'm sure there was the debate of, is it the right decision? Are you sure you've thought it through? But he supports his people all the way along. And, you know, I'll tell you, he is just a great man. Bob Biggs is a tremendous guy. Yeah, he is. He's one of the, my favorite coaches. When we do games, I love doing games with Coach Biggs. The program is phenomenal at UC Davis. They, they have, I talked about it earlier, a family atmosphere. Here's a Hall of Fame quarterback in Bob Biggs now, the head coach of this squad. He's got former players on the staff, but he really likes being the coach of UC Davis Aggies. He loves being at home. And he treats his players well with respect, still makes the game fun, but he's a very intellectual coach in terms of teaching offense, in terms of how you play the game. And he, he brings all the right pieces to the formula to make a good, classy team every year, and they're always competitive under Coach Biggs. And Jeff Tedford has done great things with Cal. You know, there was a time, about nine years ago, when some people from Cal made the trip 75, 85 miles away to Davis, California, and they interviewed Bob Biggs to be the head football coach for the Cal Bears. That's right. His name was in the mix at the time. Athletic director Steve Gladstone had a conversation with Coach Biggs along with Mark Stevens, and there was talk of Biggs with his success coming down here to Cal Coach. A little punch kick that comes down near the 35-yard line. The return is of a couple of yards, and they want to try and keep it away from those very athletic legs they have back there. Will Cap, the fullback, was back to make the play on the ball. They're trying to kick the ball away from Jer uh, Keenan Allen and Jeremy Ross, who are back deep to receive. Pick your poison. Yeah. Who are you going to kick to out of that duo? Here's what's going on around with other teams of the Pac-10. They're at the half. Oregon ranked number 11th in the nation. How about that? Showing it. Yep. 59 to 0. And then UCLA up just by three at half against K-State. Another UC school. The third of the three UC schools that play football. 
Jeff Tedford told us E.C. Sofele would get the carries in the second half. And when he gets a carry, he's like a bowling ball. He finds pins to hit, knocks him over, and he's got a first down on the first carry of the second half. A nice change of direction guy. Good quickness, little jitterbug. Watch him hit it downhill and then bounce it outside. That's exactly how that play is designed. He's a good job getting to the outside. He's quick, not necessarily top end fast. But the Bears like his work ethic, like the way he works off the field as well as in practice. So Pele, one of three true freshmen who played varsity football for Cal. And he's across midfield to the 49-yard line. And he did it last year. How hard is it for a true freshman to come in and play at this level? Uh, and we're talking Division I, top flight Pac-10 football. Wow, it's tough. And on top of that, you're talking about the University of California at Berkeley. Academically, the school incredibly challenging. You think about a lot of the schools out there right now, Davis hasn't even started their semester yet. They're not in school yet. Cal's been in for a couple weeks. They are they are already in school playing football. It's a difficult thing for a freshman to do to get used to that schedule. And a throw underneath to Keenan Allen. Cuts it at the 45. And now it's a foot race. 20. 10. Touchdown Cal Bears. Keenan Allen with his second score of the day. When it becomes a foot race and Keenan Allen is one of the names in the race, my money is on Keenan Allen. Cutting back. He's so smooth. The acceleration, amazing. A couple of Aggies had a lane on him, had him trapped, but just accelerated right away from trouble. This is, again, just a quick out, finds a way, cut back across the field, and his instincts to find the open hole so far have been perfection. After the score, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 21. That penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. He's a freshman, for goodness sakes. Let give, him be happy. Give him a break. Let the, let the rookie celebrate. <laughs> his second touchdown of the day, this one from 48 yards. He ran a little longer to get there, just like his 18-yarder than he had in the first half. He is electrifying. And on the point after, Giorgio Tavecchio. Six of six on the day for him, or is it seven of seven? You start to lose track. But how about the play of Keenan Allen? Don't lose track of him, because if you do, he's gone. Just a quick shoot route, and he cuts it all the way back across the field. And you see him just accelerating away from people. Brock Galvin had an angle on him. A couple other guys had an angle on him. And... He's there you I go. don't know. Give the, give the kids some love. I mean, That's the guy's from Greensboro, North Carolina. He's out here to California. He's saying hi to some of the Californians. They're new neighbors now. He anticipates being down in that corner more than a couple of times, doesn't he? Oski was missing out. Oski wanted his high fives over there as well. Oski, H. Well, look at Now, don't throw a flag on Oski right here. He's, he's coming over here. But how about the play of the quarterback, Kevin Riley? That touchdown pass does something to him on Cal's all-time touchdown pass list, Mike. Uh, he's, he's tied somebody at seven. It's funny, that pass was the very first type of pass that I scored a touchdown with against Wisconsin. Just a quick shoot route. Brian Treggs turned it into a touchdown. He passes me with it. Good for him. You know, he's, he's working hard. It's good for his confidence. I want to see him build up because he's always had the tools to be the guy. I'd love to see him become that complete quarterback this year in this program. That goes for any kid in any program. I always like seeing these college kids succeed and fulfilling potential. Kevin Riley has a ton of potential. I'd love to see him fulfill it this year. So they move the kickoff back to the 15-yard line. And Tavecchio, he winds into it and sends it to the 25. Josh Reese spinning midfield to the 48. Very good field position for the Cal, uh, UC Davis Aggies as they will have the football in Cal territory. Well, this is a break that Davis needed. They need to get something going. They need to get some motivation, a little confidence up. You know, Coach Big said you learn a lot about your team by how they play in the first game. He's looking for his team to come back with a little attitude, a, li a little toughness here in the second half and play Cal tough. That's the right message. You can't do anything about 35 nothing. Do something about it from here. Now, they've given up a score. Let's see what they do with their best field position to start the second half here. Newton in motion. 
pass underneath is complete. Anthony Soto with his first catch of this game. And he picks up a couple. For the Aggies, they had one first down in the first half. It was on their first offensive play. Soto, just a quick stick route to the inside, sitting down in the hole, doing a nice job figuring out where the passing lane is to his quarterback. A little pitch and catch, start off with the easy stuff. Did it against the cornerback, Darian Hagan, who made the tackle. The L.A. native from Crenshaw High School. Played his high school ball the Shaw. What a high school season Crenshaw had last year in Southern California. Playing in the Open Division Championship game in the state against De La Salle. Timeout called by the Aggies. We'll step aside with the Cal Bears leading 42-0. Fans enjoying themselves at Memorial Stadium. This is the final year. Construction on a new facility beginning in December. Let's go down to the field. Dan Dibley has the athletic director at Cal, Sandy Barber. Yeah, Jim, I'm here with Sandy Barber. And Sandy, a lot of exciting stuff going on here. Why don't you update us on all, all the renovation and the retrofitting that's been going on? Well, we're thrilled to get the season underway and, and have our fans back in Memorial Stadium. And they've seen lots of changes. The Student Athlete High Performance Center is we're about a year away uh, from getting into it. And uh, just a beautiful facility unfolding right in front of us. And then as soon as this season is over, we will get underway with the renovation and the retrofit of the west side of California Memorial Stadium. Be playing in AT&T in the 11th season and then be back here for 12 and we're really, really excited about it. Now in the meantime, I know that a lot of the athletes have had to take their weight training elsewhere. Tell me about the Surge Center and how that all came to be. Well, this has been a huge project, very complex, a lot of moving parts. And one part of that has been our Surge facility, which is up uh, uh, in uh, Strawberry Canyon. Uh, we've moved sports medicine, strength and conditioning, our equipment room, all of our coaches' offices for the, the programs that work out of Memorial Stadium. Uh, up to uh, up to the canyon into temporary facilities and uh, they actually have more space than they had here in Memorial uh, but they've had to learn to do the logistics just a little bit differently but I think they've settled very nicely into it. Have you found that it's brought the whole athletic department together with you know, rowing teams hanging out with the tennis team and whatnot? Well that's one of the goals of the Student Athlete High Performance Center is for us to have two general hubs, one at Haas, one up here at Memorial Stadium, and it will bring and has brought all of our teams together, but there's always been a lot of camaraderie uh, amongst our teams with our close to 900 student athletes in Cal Athletics. Now, when you knew you were going to have to move for that one season, how did you decide on AT&T? What kind of drew your eye to that place? Well, certainly there were several options uh, within the Bay Area, uh, but we focused uh, fairly quickly in on at and Larry Bear, uh, the president of the Giants, is also a Cal alum. Uh, really, he and the Giants organization went out of their way uh, to make it work for us. We think it's a fabulous uh, uh, facility, a great opportunity for us to have a presence in San Francisco. Uh, transportation is easy for our students. Just jump on BART and, and come on over, and we're, we're looking forward to it. Well, congratulations, Sandy, on the impending move back. And if you need any help lifting those heavy weights, my guy Mike Pulaski is ready to pitch in. Uh, Mike, Mike will always help out. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Go Bears. Tim, thanks very much. Very insightful right there. Sandy Barber, uh, you know, she's on the cusp of something very important right here. What does it mean to the athletic department, the football program, that this place is going to get a new look in a couple of years? Think around, about around the nation, the arms race has gone on with facilities and everything else. You know, very famous Nebraska's weight room to kind of kick things off. Ohio State, you know, in the horseshoe. You, you come back, Phil Knight, obviously... A big donor up at University of Oregon did huge things with Oregon. So now the Bears being able to compete on that facilities level is huge. And a new look to the stadium, a new face. It, it really plays into recruiting here at the University of California. Bringing kids in and having them look at your facilities and go, wow, that's impressive. To this point, Jeff has been selling guys on football, on the team, and on the school. Now he can sell facilities as well. As the Pac-10 continues to grow with the addition of Colorado and Utah, the Pac-10 has great things going on in Cal. Great things going on with this facility, with its, uh, its athletic programs. And a great start to 2010, a lead of 42 nothing on UC Davis. High expectations this year. Flags were down. Let's Dead find ball, out. Ball start, number 65 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Main third down. You know, Memorial Stadium has quite a history, Mike. You were part of it in playing here. You go back to 1923 when this place originally was put together for $1.4 million. 
And, and I bet the donors would like that price tag today. It's going to be over $321 million. You know, 71,000 people crowded in here. This place can get loud when it does. They're going to bring that down a little bit. But uh, there have been some fantastic football games in the Memorial Stadium. Well, you see that new Pac-10 logo right there at the 25. They've got to be happy that the facilities upgrade that's going on at Cal and the commitment to the excellence in athletics. And we should point out, both schools making a commitment. UC Davis, Aggie yes, Stadium is spectacular right. for what they have working yeah. in Davis. And both schools are so challenging academically, it oh. makes things tough on coaches as well. Both schools, such phenomenal academic centers. Two of the best public universities in the world, both Berkeley and Davis. And both of these coaches really emphasizing academics with their students, too. It really is student athletes in the game here playing for Coach Biggs and Coach Ted. Which makes the job of both men that much more impressive when you consider all the greatness they've had academically. This is Sean Kelly. Placement from the 33. That's a 43-yard field goal. And it is good. And for UC Davis, they're on the board. They like it. They remember. They don't get shut out very often. You go back last year against Fresno State. They took a 51-0 thumping. And now they got some points on the board and a little reason to cheer here when they make their trip to Berkeley, California. Got the offense moving a little bit. A first down. Big kick by Sean Kelly. Oh, Kelly, very good. All great Western Conference last year. Good kicker for Davis. They'd like to see him out there. Tomorrow, the Oakland Athletics close out the three-game set with the Los Angeles Angels. Ben Mazzaro takes to the hill for the A's, while Urban Santana throws for the Halos. Coverage starts 12.30 p.m. It's A's pregame live, and then A's baseball, and you only get it on Comcast Sportsnet California. A's been fighting all season long. And doing a heck of a job of it. They're in the wrong division, though. You have to take a look at what the Texas Rangers have been doing. They've had a good year. Sean Kelly sized up the field goal, knocked it down. Now you look at who is deep. Uh-oh. Uh that is Gary Allen. Also back, E.C. Sofele. Those are the two players back deep to receive on the kick. And Allen has been impressive. Touchdown to the air, a touchdown rushing, and here he takes the short hop, and it slowed him up just a hitch, and he made his way to the 25-yard line on a 21-yard kickoff return. Yeah, he gets up a little bit slowly, but he's got to be happy with his performance. New quarterback coming for Cal after the Hunter Pale tackle. And it is Bo Sweeney who will be the signal caller. The 6-2 player from Fresno, California. Played at Clovis West. They had a lot of good football in those Clovis schools. A lot of great football in Clovis. And if the name Sweeney sounds familiar, synonymous with Fresno. His grandpa, the head coach at Fresno State, legendary. His dad, an outstanding All-American quarterback himself for the Bulldogs. So a lot of football in the Sweeney family. So Kevin Riley's day is done, 14 of 20, 264 yards, and of course he had some touchdown passes in there as well. He moved into seventh all-time on the touchdown pass list. He has three touchdowns thrown in this game today, and now it'll work from the side. How important are these snaps for a guy like Bo Sweeney? Incredibly important, because later on in the season, you want a guy who's seen game time, who's in the rhythm of the game, so it's not coming at him all at once. Getting him out there to take snaps the first game of the season settles him into this offense, settles him down with his team, and also establishes him a little bit with his teammates as the guy. You know, if, if God forbid anything were to happen to Riley, Sweeney has to be ready, and getting these snaps starts to prepare for the season. Out of the shotgun. Bovon Dabosky Johnson moves over to the right. Sweeney tucks. First down. And then it's funny. When backup quarterbacks get into the game, oftentimes you see that a lot. They'll sit and they tuck. Two things going on. Offensive linemen, for some reason, when backups get in the game, protection not always as good in a game like this. It, it, it just starts to slip a little bit. But secondly, the game's moving so fast. The backup quarterback who hasn't been in the game, it's tough to come off the bench and get into a game like this. It's moving so fast, you maybe don't go through the reads as well as you should. Jeremy Ross split. Now they move Michael Calvin over to the left side.
So Pele picks up a couple. Cal getting some very important snaps for a number of different guys. And E.C. Sofele took, he really took advantage of the time that Shane Vereen was out at the start of camp. And now he's getting some of those big carries. In the first half, we saw him They'll get more in the second half. And then they'll move on down the chart. Kovon Dabosky Johnson also on that list. And he's on the field right now. Boski Johnson last year, nine games, averaged over eight yards per carry as they sent Ross in motion. And it is oh, picked off as Jonathan Perkins from Castro Valley High School, a sophomore for UC Davis. Oh, he was right there. Close. Sweeney getting very lucky. Actually, Michael Calvin at that receiver spot on the inside. He needs to come out and make a block on that man. And he never got him cleaned off. Tough. Tough one. They got lucky to get away with it. Bears did. Good read by Perkins. To be right there on the spot. 5'11", 177. Now he's matched up against Alex Bogaman. On the near portion of your screen. Out of the shotgun. Third down. Ross. Slips but stays on his feet. Tries to fight for a first down. Good job in his Aggies defense. Gang tackling. Dozy Amajoy there. Knock him down. Part of the tackling unit. Finished off by Marshall Congdon. Those two right there. Going at the ball carrier. And that'll force a punt by the Cal Bears. And you said it, Coach. Swarm tackling. Getting those jerseys to the ball. Stopping people. Jeremy Ross has already shown how explosive he is. you got to make sure you get as many hats on him as possible. Brian Anger, not very busy today. He'll send one in the direction of Tom Hemmingson, a redshirt freshman. A Danville product. Playing close to home with his game against Cal. He stands at the 10. And Anger to Hemmingson inside the five, and he's drilled. And that's going to be coached up in meetings. You know, they tell guys, if it's going to go inside the 10, you let it go over your head. You try to distract. Hemmingson taking the kick inside and getting buried down by the goal line. A tough place to start for the Aggies when they come back. For Kevin Dapp, from 1995 to 1998, he threw for over 7,600 yards, threw 68 touchdown passes, and had a passer rating of 139.4. Went on to an NFL career, but now he's got the Cal colors on. That's right. Actually started his career in Davis as an assistant. Ended up coming over to Cal. Coaching receivers now. A very good coach. Smart guy in that mold. Bob Biggs, very offensive-minded. He's a great quarterback, too. Hall of Famer at UC Davis. And today, kind of mixed emotions for him. Obviously, he wants the Bears to win, but he wants to see some Aggie pride, too. You look at what Bob Biggs has turned out from this program. There have been some great quarterbacks. Biggs, one of those great quarterbacks. J.T. O'Sullivan is in the NFL with Cincinnati. Mark Grebe, yes. arguably the best to ever play in the Arena League. Yeah, very good. Won a couple uh, Arena Bowls down with Sabercats in San Jose. Kahari Jones, who CFL was player of the year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats down there. We just mentioned Kevin Daff. You know, there have been some great ones. John Grant a few years ago was a phenomenal quarterback as well. So Biggs knows how to pick his quarterbacks great quarterbacks. You have to have receivers that can catch the ball. And they've had that as well. As the redshirt freshman rolls out and gets a little time. Throws it ahead of Anthony Soto. A couple of guys who were pretty good in the last few years for UC Davis. Chris Carter. A career record, receiving record, of 213 balls caught. And then Bakari Grant, who was in an NFL camp of the 49ers this summer. But those guys were yeah. tremendous targets. Yeah, I mean, you talk about it. Chris Carter was your quick guy. He'd catch anything you threw at him. As you said, receiving leader at Davis. Bakari Grant was your home run guy. He would make things happen. He made some catches that were just unbelievable. And the Aggies offensively with seven catches on the day. From Randy Wright, who wings one out. And he gets a completion, but not for very many yards. The pass caught by Anthony Soto. Short game, but that'll bring up another punting down for UC Davis. They've been busy there. They have 
punt it seven times in this game for an average of almost 43 yards per punt for this man, Colton Schmidt. A Bakersfield, California product. Run for 52 punts all of last season. You're looking at number eight for the first game of the year. Bear catch at the 41. The Great. Bears, good field position. Great concentration by Jerry Ross. Too. Anytime you run into a pile like that, it's always scary, but he did a nice job focusing on that ball. 35-yard punt. Cal Bears will have it for the big lead in the third quarter. Tonight, 10.30 p.m., Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. It's Sportsnet Central. In-depth sports news for the Bay Area sports fan. Ace and Giants highlights from the weekend. Also, it's the first weekend of college football. Sportsnet Central right on it. Raiders, Niners, they've got reports from both. Tonight, 10.30 p.m., Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Got to watch. I mean, this is the best time of the year. Baseball, college football, NFL, everything overlapping. And on a spectacular day in Northern California, Cal Bears with a lead, EC, Sofeli, near a first down. But on a day like this, you think, wow, there are a lot of things to do in Northern California. 58,000 people in 40, can't be at wrong. 40. <laughs> They're right here. Right here, enjoying Memorial Stadium from last year in its present configuration. Watching the Bears take on Davis. It's another reason to come out this season to Memorial Stadium. Last year, ori original configuration. You can say you were there. And they're expecting some very big things. And we've seen some big things from this offense that Jeff Tedford is running out there. And now they've gone to their second string quarterback in Bo Sweeney. And Safele gets dropped near the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard on that run right. What I like is the Bears have left that first offensive unit in on the offensive line. They want to get the quarterbacks, the running backs, get them some timing, getting them a sense out there, letting those guys get some plays off as well. Some coaches go for the wholesale swapping out. The Bears going with that first string offensive line. DeSarte Yarnway wears number 23 as the lone back, a redshirt freshman from Sacred Heart Cathedral. And it's Yarnway spinning with a first down to the 24-yard line. Well, the six-footer, a San Francisco kid. How about that high school career? Yeah, Great numbers for him. Sacred Heart. Fantastic rushing yards, 24 touchdowns. It's six foot, 223 pounds. This guy is a load on the inside. He's really the pound it downhill power running back type of guy. You know, Dabosky Johnson, more of an outside guy. Sophia, more of an outside guy. So you have a nice mix, four backs with different styles. They'll stay with Youngway. Logaman is split out along with Calvin. Youngway again. Stumbling forward as he runs inside the tackles, head down inside the 15. Nice little cut. Good job. I was talking about it. Shane Marine sticking that foot in the ground and going. Yarnway does a good job of downhill, good speed. Hits the hole, sticks his foot, and gets downfield right now. He'll get a little better on balance as he gets a little bit stronger in those legs. He'll be a guy who can make that single cut but be powerful as a back running through the A gaps. This Aggies defense, they got to tighten up right here. They want to try and get a stop as Cal is inside the red zone. You go back to 2009 when Cal was in the red zone. They were there 43 times in the season, came away with 38 scores. Successful 81% of the time. 24 of those touchdowns, 14 on field goals. They want to stay hungry, though. They want to look to get six plus the point after. They don't want to settle for three. Third and short coming up. You know, no offensive coach is ever satisfied with having to come away with three. You always look at that in retrospect and say, it's okay. Play up the time, you want your six points. They've got the first down. Marshall Congdon made the stop. But again, it's DeSerte Yarnway who's starting to carry the load on this possession, and he'll come out. Some substitutions as Jeff Tedford. Andy Ludwig start to shuffle in the fresh legs, new bodies. First down and 10. They can get a first down. The ball spotted at the 11 for Jeff Tedford's team. Play fake to the Bosky Johnson. Rolling Sweeney. Chased out of bounds. 
maybe back to the line of scrimmage, might have lost a yard that time. Showed some good quicks once he got to the outside, though. Short side of the field, uh, field, they would play fake to the large side of the field, then he came back the opposite way on that play. Got to get the quarterback out and moving. You got to get him involved in the game. He can't just be in there handing exactly. the ball off all the time. Especially for young guys, getting him moving play action is easier to get them focused rather than having to sit in the pocket, pocket and focus downfield. Just like we talked about right at the beginning of the game, you've got to get guys into it, get that blood flowing, get rid of some of that adrenaline. Dubosky Johnson stood up at the line, pick up of a couple, thrown back just inside the 10-yard line. And the Aggie defense tries to tighten up one more time, toughen up Dozy Joy right in the middle of that thing. He's been impressive in this game. Yes, UC Davis has given up some points, 42 points in the ball game, but that doesn't mean they've quit playing. They're in there hitting, they're getting it done. It's second half right now. If you're just looking at the second half, it's 7-3. Right. That's how they have to split this game up. Well, and they play tough. It's a tough team. They're well coached. They keep coming. You know, in a game like this, you have to have realistic expectations. At times, they're going to get out-athleted. Cal has more scholarships, better recruiting power, but they're never, Davis is never going to quit on the field, and we have not seen them quit yet. To the air. Caught. And then and the ball is loose. And according to UC Davis, they've got it. Now Marshall Congdon comes out of there with the football without the helmet. And he wants the football. He's saying, come on now. That ball, it went down. Yeah, the officials are going to rule that down. I believe he was down on the field by contact. But Jacob Wark made the catch. And then went down on the play. But that's what we talked about, not quitting. Davis out there stripping the ball, trying to get it out. Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's a fumble. Oh, it is out. You're right. It is a fumble. a fumble. His knee was never down. That's a loose ball, and the Aggies should have it. Yeah. Replay officials, yeah, should be stopping it right there now. There you go. Calling it down. They looked Good at job. it from the booth. Great job by the replay officials looking at that. That's going to be Aggies ball going the other way. Now that's the system put in place, and that's how it's supposed to That's work. exactly it. I saw the same things the official on the field saw in live play. The ball looked like it got stripped out later. But you can see that ball's coming out. Knee is still has not touched. That ball is out right there, and both his knees are up. So he, he is not down, and that's a fumble. And then you scrap for it. Marshall Condon made the stop. Now there you see the hit. That kind of loosens the ball. Then you see the other bodies. Davis has done a very good job. One guy gets on you, and the other guys are coming in to get their get their lick as well. And along the way, Congdon made the stop. He also jarred the ball and then recovered it. Now this is from the Elk Grove kid. What a nice performance for him today to come out and play well. A guy went to Sheldon High School in Elk Grove. Uh, Talk about another area. We talked about Clovis area with good schools. Elk yeah. Grove School District in the Sacramento area. Yeah, very, very good, good high school football. Very good football. You know, Congress the guy. The rolling on the field stand. Oh. Huh? Oh, well, they're saying Cal recover the football. Well, again, the first guy in the pile is known as the one who comes, the guy who comes away with it is known as the first one to recover it underneath. So the Bears recover it and then Condon pulled it away. They looked at the replay a lot longer than we did, so they saw how many times that ball changed hands in the pile. It's a system put in place, and it's exactly the way it's supposed to work. So on fourth down, Bo Sweeney rolling. Tried to buy time, steps inside, touchdown! <laughs> and nice play by Bo Sweeney. You talked about it earlier, Coach. Why do these guys have to see playing time now? He actually had two open receivers. As a young quarterback, though, sometimes you get hesitant to pull it down and throw it. Sweeney rolling to his right. He's got one man in the flat who had an edge, and then he's got across the back of the end zone, Michael Calvin, but his eyes had already dropped. The game got quick for him. He made a nice play to get it in the end zone, and a touchdown is a touchdown. But as he gets more comfortable, he throws that ball to the six. Point after number seven for Giorgio Tavecchio. The 5'8 junior has been busy. Bo Sweeney got chased around a little bit. He gets a little bit of end zone time today. 
So you, you want to get rid of that ball, that third to fifth step to your guy in the flat, if not the back of the end zone. Sweeney doing it himself. That's the third option in that play. So he executed the play. But again, as he gets comfortable in the offense, like Riley is at this point, he makes those throws for the TD pass. But he's still got six points. He still moved this team and drove for a touchdown. How about Riley and the leadership that he shows? He's the first guy to get over to the backup quarterback. Congratulate him on finishing the play. Now, what goes on right here? Do you have to take this phone call when you're a quarterback? Oh, yeah. You always okay. got to take this phone call, Coach. Right. Coach is going to be telling him the same thing I was just telling him. Nice job out there. Way to get it in the end zone. Good job driving the team. Here's what we could have done. Here's what they're doing to you. You see Andy Ludwig up there telling him, hey, hit that quick guy in the out. If not, you got the back of the end zone. But good job running the offense. Way to work it down. We'll come back and we'll get it on the next series. He never said take a message. He never, he never said, hey, you know, maybe after. Yeah, usually if you say take a message, <laughs> they mention the scholarship. Then everything comes into perspective. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Conversation done. I got it, coach. to the outside and then he's pushed out as the special teams for Cal coming into play tackle made Sean Katus getting involved the starter from last year getting a little time on special teams but for Cal no quarterback play has been very good for them today the starter Kevin Riley three touchdown passes he was right on his game and then the backup, Bo Sweeney, comes in and makes the right decision and a run into the end zone. On the other side, it's a big learning experience. The redshirt freshman getting his very first start. They hadn't had a redshirt freshman start or freshman start since 2000 when Ryan Flanagan did it at UC Davis. He replaced J.T. O'Sullivan in a game. And now Randy Wright getting a lesson on the defense. I think they're starting to amp it up just a little bit here, Mike. As Josh Reese is thrown down by DeAndre Coleman, the redshirt freshman at six foot six and 306 pounds. But it's been a quarterback's day for the Cal Bears. They lead through three. The final season at Memorial Stadium for the Cal Bears in its current configuration. It's starting the right way, 2010. As the Bears lead the UC Davis Aggies 49 to 3. With Mike Pulaski, I am Jim Cozumore, Dan Dibley working on the sidelines. And this has been quite a performance by the Cal Bears. This is exactly how they wanted the season to start. Good performances all around. We've seen some new faces. The expected faces have played well. I think Jeff Tedford's going to be happy with the performance. I think we heard him walking off at halftime. He's going to be happy with the score and the result in the end. There's always something to work on. As I said before, when you look at film, it's never as good as you think it was, and it's never as bad as you think it was. They're going to find the things to work on, maybe pat the guys in the back for what they did, and get on to game two. He's always evolving as a head coach. We have referenced the changes in practice and the way things have gone. Pressure to Randy Wright. He gets clubbed trying to slide down. He still ended up taking a shot. Not very good at sliding. Coach Biggs told us that that's one of the things that he needs to work on is figuring out when to slide. Now, we talked about this fumble ruling earlier in the game. The Bears fumbled down on the four-yard line. The runner, the ball carrier for the Bears was ruled down because they stopped his forward progress. The whistle stopped him. It wasn't a turnover underneath. It was just never a fumble. Forward progress was stopped. The replay officials let us know that was the rule. Third down for the Aggies. Incomplete. Tried to hit Sean Credit. The Aggies now 1 for 11 on third down efficiency. It's a tough day. A tough day for Sean Credit. He comes in with 39 catches from a year ago. And that's not even the leader on the team. Remember, they had two other guys who were pretty good. But yeah. today, he's been very well covered. Well, and again, a lot of that is pressure on the quarterback, too. Randy Wright has been under fire all day long. When you feel that pressure coming, you're less accurate than you normally would be. You're trying to hurry things. You're stepping short. You're, you're getting bad technique at the quarterback. So it's not just credit. It's Randy Wright as well, but the pressure coming up the middle at him. 
42-yard punt. Jeremy Ross has it. Dan Dibley has more. You know, it's been 71 years since these two teams have played. Let's go back to 1939. Dibs, what do you have on that game? Well, Kellis, as you know, I was there as a ball boy uh, on the sideline. Not really, but it was the first half of a doubleheader, a quirky college football doubleheader. They only were going to play two hours, and at the two-hour mark, Davis was ahead, 14-12. Well, Cal said, not so fast, Aggies. you got to keep playing. We're going full length. They played a full-length game. Cal won that game, went on to lose the second half of the doubleheader to Pacific, but there's some questions question, guys, about who won the game. Davis says they won because the two-hour mark showed them in front. Cal claims that it's a victory. Mike, you went here to Berkeley. Help me out. Who was the winner? Well, I think the winner, the way the paper says it, is the end score. But the, the complaint was that it was just supposed to be a two-hour game. Yes. Stub Allison, legendary coach at Cal. 14-12, going into halftime, he was playing his backups as a warm-up for that doubleheader. Coming out in the second half, he put his starters in. The way the papers read it later on that day, it said that the Aggies beat Cal instead of UOP for that second game. So there you go. The Bears ended up losing 6-0 to zero to UOP for that second game, and they gave much of that credit to the Aggies wearing the Bears out. That's a nice play defensively. UC Davis comes in as they're starting to go a couple deep. Hunter Paul, the linebacker, steps in, makes the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. That's right. The Aggies not giving up. Good job getting underneath on the outside. Right tackle out there. Sam DiMartinis. You can't let the man inside. Can't let him get that angle on the run. This is when it starts to get a little bit sloppier. Your second guy's in, your twos. You start to see some of those technique mistakes that you won't get later on in the season. Third down out of the shotgun, Bo Sweeney. Underneath. Kovon Dubosky Johnson made the catch. Not enough for the first down. Punting down coming up for the Cal Bears in the UC Davis Aggies defense holds. You know, Sweeney getting some of his playing experience here. It's the hitches, it's the little things right here. When you get the confidence, you hit your fifth step and you go bam, get it out. Sweeney added three or four different hitches because he wasn't sure where his running back was going to go. Those are the things that you're developing right now. The comfort level, understanding where your guys are going to go, setting up a sense of timing with your receivers. That's why it's important to have your twos and threes get on the field early. Go down at some point. Tom Hemmingson back deep to receive the punt, and he got hit pretty good. More to come on Comcast Sports of California. and he ties my good friend Mike Pulaski on that list, but we also have been, well, we've been greeted by Keenan Allen, <laughs> and uh, that guy knows how to make impressive uh, openings, doesn't he? A little welcome to the show party yeah. for Keenan Allen, because he looks like he's been doing it for four years. Yeah, he does, and he is a true freshman. Plays a wide receiver spot today, has a couple of touchdowns. As there's a new quarterback, Austin Hayworth has come into the game for the UC Davis Aggies. And on his first pass attempt, that ball slipped out of his hands. He was trying to find the receiver, Brandon Tucker, for a screen. A little tough coming off the bench. He's trying to drop back, deliver the ball, and just uh, slips away from him. You know, it's interesting. I bet that guy's thrown thousands of passes, and that never has happened to him. He gets a chance on the big stage. He got 60,000 people in the crowd. And the ball all of a sudden gets nerves. It could be sweat yeah. from the center. I mean, yeah. there's a whole bunch of things that can go on, but it happens to every quarterback at some point. So keep it on the ground. And Tucker goes down after a pickup of a couple of yards. You know, this Cal team, they've had to overcome some 
you know, different guys leave for the program. Now, on the C.C. Davis side, they've seen some of their skilled guys leave. you got two of your best receivers and your starting quarterback for ball. Yeah. They're looking at a whole new set of guys who have to come in and mature quickly. Yeah, well, you know, you lose those receivers. That was expected. The quarterback wasn't expected. And so, kind of filling a gap. Randy Wright's going to be a very good quarterback. This is a tough place to start your first college football experience. Third down for Hayward. Pass complete to Dean Rogers. And if they give him progress, they'll give him a first down. And it looks like he's got it. Now here we are into the fourth quarter. And for UC Davis, it's a little sidebar to keep, keep your eyes on. You go back to 1969. In every game that they have played since 1969, UC Davis has come away with at least 200 yards in total offense. That's a string of 442 consecutive games of at least 200 yards in total offense. Today, in total offense, where are they at? They're at 77 total yards. Hayward throws incomplete. You have to remember as well, we talked to Coach Biggs about this. They haven't seen this Cal defense. They had to go back to NFL films on, on Coach Pendergast with Kansas City, with Arizona, to see what he thought it might look like. Well, you're never really sure until you show up on the field. You see what's going on down there. Now they have a better understanding of what this defense looks like, but you have to make in-game adjustments. This is the first game film of this Cal Bear defense as coached by defensive coordinator Prince Pendergast. Pendergast. And we should point out that Coach Pendergast told us, you know, we've got a pretty smart group here. I don't have to keep anything out of the game plan defensively. I'm doing everything I did with Kansas City a year ago. Hayworth, pass drop. That's a drop, not a miss. Brandon Tucker had to go through his hands. He felt the pressure coming in from that defense. But for a defensive coordinator who's been working in the NFL for so long to come to the Division I college level and realize he's got some pretty bright guys to deal with. One of the benefits of both of these schools is that qualify here, you've got to be pretty sharp and you've got to be academically strong. So the kids that make it into this program have the tools that you only have to tell them once. We heard him say the same thing about Keenan Allen. We heard him talk about different guys on the field. You only have to tell them once and they get it done. That is a huge help as a college football coach. Third down and down goes Austin Hayward. And he goes down in a heap with some big bodies out in front of him. Trevor Guyton among them, number 92, who's a 6'3 junior. He gets credited with a sack. He had one sack last year. And that was Keenan Allen on the sideline. He had a big first day in a Cal Bears uniform. Jeremy Ross, fair catch from the 39-yard line. Cal Bears will have it. We've seen some impressive offensive performances in this game today. You look at the Pac-10, Mike, we're probably going to see some impressive offensive performances from a lot of guys. These three names, I think, are, are big names to watch for the upcoming year. Oh, huge quiz, obviously. He was the, the freshman offensive player of the year two years ago. Fantastic running back up at Oregon State. Then the quarterbacks, Andrew Luck, Jake Locker, both incredibly talented. I love Jake Locker as a quarterback. Coach Sarkeesian up there doing a nice job with that offense. If they let him loose, let him run a little bit more this year, he's going to be even more potent as a quarterback. He's actually kept him in the pocket didn't want him to get hurt and made him more of a passer. Now he's got those tools. We saw him play Cal December 5th last year. Have a great game. But now you let him out of the pocket too and you've got to contain this guy. Oh, he's a crazy threat. And, you know, that, we only have enough room in our graphics, but think about the other guys around the league. Nick Foles down in Arizona was fantastic. What a first night for him. How about Michael James up in Oregon? I mean, he's going to be phenomenal as well. James Rogers is a guy, the brother of Chris Rogers up at Oregon State. So Nick Grigsby, Matt Barkley, the offenses in the Pac-10 this year are going to be electrifying. We saw some of that electric today from the Cal Bears. What do you got? The good guys with the ball. The guys who are trying to get the ball need to be better. Who are the guys who stand out to you defensively in the pack? Well, they say defense wins championships. The, you know, we're going to have these great offense. We talked about it. Raheem Moore, of course, safety down at UCLA. Big hitter, big player. Kenny Rowe on the defensive line. Vontae's perfect is as nasty as they come at that linebacker spot. 
phenomenal. I think Oregon's defense stands a chance of being really, really good this year. A little bit younger than that defense in front, but they can be phenomenal by the end of the season. And we're seeing the Bears can put it together on defense as well. So there's going to be some great defenses around the conference. And great offense, great defense makes for great football in the Pac-10 this year. That's a nice read by Bo Sweeney, the quarterback. He had a little pressure, and he let the pressure come to him before he hit the tight end. It's a nice play by the backup. And I know you want me to say... I can't say it. I'm trying to pronounce his name. He's the tight end who made the catch on the play. You'll get it. Salamona. Amoa. Salamo we, we worked on this before the telecast all, all the whole morning. So go ahead, say it. Salamona Aingamoa. Yeah. Little power lead. The arm rate cutting back. Got a helmet right on the football. All right, now here it is. Salamona Aingamoa. Who made the Nicely catch on that? Nicely done, huh? How about that? Yes. He's from Honolulu, and he's out there playing hard on college football Saturday. The season has begun. Everyone getting into the act on the Cal side, becoming a piece of the action. Let's get you some Pac-10 scores from games. Oregon, they had the big lead early. They continue to roll. UCLA in a good one with K-State in the fourth quarter. Trailing 17-13. K-State came from behind in that one. UCLA was up early. Oregon, very good this year. Oregon State, oh. good. You think it's, if you break down the Pac-10 into states, yes. Oregon's the state. I think Oregon's the state. Obviously, California has an advantage with four Pac-10 teams, but I think Oregon, in terms of top-tier teams right now, is phenomenal. And then, you know, the Bears need to prove what they can do. Rated early on, rated a little bit lower. UCLA, who knows? I mean, UCLA is a huge question mark. You have to see what they can do down there. Quarterback, you know, Branson. What Coach Neuheisel has going is changing up the offense down there. You have Norm Chow, one of the most well-regarded offensive coordinators in all of the country. And now they're going to this new pistol offense. They're calling it the revolver to put Norm Chow's signature on it. But it's they're just changing so much up, so you don't know what's going to happen down at UCLA. Um, USC, obviously the suspensions and everything going on down there makes it a little more difficult, but Oregon, very tough. Arizona showed that they were very good last night. Sweeney on fourth down. The pressure coming. Gets away. Does he have the first down? Let's see where they mark it. It is a first down. That's individual effort that time by the backup quarterback, Bo Sweeney. What a way to get the sticks. A la Fran Tarkenton in the back in the backfield there. Coming front side, not comfortable with anything open. Strong running. Yeah, I love it when the offensive linemen are always looking back at the quarterback. You got to turn around, lock down field, clear yeah. somebody out for me. Yeah, don't look me in the eye, everybody. We go get somebody. Matt Rios had a grip on the collar, and he let go, and that gave it up to Sweeney to get outside and get the first down. Wide receiver screen, but the knee hit the ground at the 35-yard line. So a pickup of maybe one on the play as the receiver went down to get it. Natural reaction on a low ball like that. Coleman Edmond, part of a wide receiver core that, that they're very impressed with. We didn't see much of Alex Lagerman today. We saw plenty of Keenan Allen, Jeremy Ross, Marvin Jones as a touchdown catch in this game. Kevin Riley's going to have some good targets. And they like Coleman Edmond. They think he's got a chance. He's been playing with a cast in the thumb for about a week. Pulls you back, holds off the timing, trying to catch the ball. It really just feels you know, funky out there as a wide receiver. But uh, like you said, Coach, this receiving core that they've got coming in, inexperienced, but deep with talent. They just have to show up on the field. And Sweeney, again, he's not pulling the trigger right now. They want him to pull the trigger. He had receivers open, but he's holding on to the football. And that's why you don't do that as a quarterback. Ends up getting whacked right at the end of the run. If you can get it downfield to the athletes, you do it. Marcus North put a big hit on him to finish. Yeah, if you're a defensive player, that's what you want. First guy you get there, you hold him up. The second guy you get there, you get the hit. Cal with the lead. Bo Sweeney's going to get the smelling salts. Shake the cobwebs out. The 
percent of the earthquakes push for the playoffs continues next Saturday on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. The Quakes they host their conference rival FC Dallas at Buckshaw Stadium. It's a pivotal matchup with two clubs. They both have postseason aspirations. You won't want to miss next week. FC Dallas, San Jose Earthquakes, 7 o'clock. Only on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Chris Wondolowski's had a big year for that club. And, you know, here's Bo Sweeney on the side. He's not going to the sideline. Here's the shot that he took. First guy held him up. Second guy, Marcus North, got the lick on him. And got that just underneath the shoulder pads, above the rib pads. You see him breathing kind of hard right now. That hurts when you get whacked in the ribs like that. Now he's going to stay on the side as Brock Mansion, the third quarterback used today by the Cal Bears, comes on. First down. Kovon Dabosky Johnson right up the middle. Fights his way just inside the 20-yard line. So it's Brock Mansion now getting a chance. Mansion from Dallas, Texas. Big target, 6'5", 237 pounds. Big player last year at this time. He was the second string quarterback. And then he and Bo Sweeney fought it out at camp this year for the number two spot. And this time it was won by Sweeney. Has the tools to make the plays. Needs to get comfortable in this offense. You know, they're very talented, very deep at quarterback for Cal. Just some of the young guys need experience. Kabosky Johnson inside the 15. And he barrels forward. Tackle finally made. Byron Grundle. Hoping to make the stop. Backup linebacker from Danville, California. From San Ramon Valley High School. In high school, Byron Grundle at 6'2", almost 200 pounds. This guy was a great swimmer. All-around athlete. They can have do a lot of different things. Now on the football field. Just love the athleticism of a guy like that, a multi-sport guy. You see a lot of these high school players in different sports. Coaches like to see it from the competitive nature. Dabosky Johnson outside. Tackle made. Defense doing a good job of staying home. That time it was Jonathan Perkins, the cornerback. He almost had an interception and clean field to run in front of. He dropped one earlier, but he does a very good job of the corner, stays in his spot, makes the tackle. Bang. Come right on up and hit the guy. He didn't wait for, you know what, he didn't wait for the runner to come to That's him. Right. He went and got the runner. Shed the block, come up, make the tackle, exactly what you're supposed to do on the outside of the defensive player. You have to be the aggressive guy. You have to be the one that brings it. Perkins brought it. That's how they teach it at Castro Valley High School. Where he played his high school ball. Kovon Dabosky Johnson off the right side. To the six-yard line. It'll bring up third down for the Bears. The lead of 49 to 3 inside of three minutes remaining in this game. And you know, you give credit to that guy right there, number 13. Good day on the field. The second half, he, he's been just as impressive with his leadership skills yeah. and staying involved in the game in the second half. Well, and he picked that up in the offseason when we talked to all the coaches, from Coach Tedford to Coach Ludwig, they said. His offseason really set him apart this year. He's a guy that showed up, was a leader off the field, did all the right things that you need your team to do for the future starting quarterback. Today. On the low snap, that time Manchin tried to make the run on the right side, and he was stopped by Ernest Sales III as he came right in and made the stop. Now the second unit guys coming in for UC Davis, they're playing pretty proud. They are going to try to keep this Cal team out of the end zone. And, you know, on fourth down, Bob Biggs has gone to some of the starters. He's got he's got Dozy Amajoy back on the field. Big offensive lineman coming in. This, yep. is, all, this is that uh, PAT here trying to protect it up. Davis wants to keep him off the scoreboard. That's why not. You know, you're out here to play every play. And the field goal is good for Giorgio Tavecchio. Good day for him if you had him on your college fantasy team and the Cal Bears rolling, leading 52 to three. A beautiful day all around if you're a fan of the Cal Bears. They lead UC Davis 52 to three, minute 37 remaining in the fourth quarter. Just a perfect day for college football Saturday and the college season to begin for the Cal Bears. 
And boy, has this guy been busy today. Giorgio Tavecchio. They get seven touchdowns in a day. Seven for seven on points after. And then he knocks down a short field goal, a little chip shot. It's all the kickoffs that really wear you off because you got to kick it and then run down, too. So, got his sprint practice done. And another one to come. In the direction of Brandon Tucker for the seventh. Tucker driven down at the 20 yard line. After this game, the Cal Bears look at their schedule. Well, they see the Buffaloes. Yes, a future Pac-10, Pac-12 opponent coming up. Get it right. That's right. In Nevada, Arizona, UCLA, SC. It gets tough. There's, there are no easy games coming up anymore. So many good programs out there. Arizona, how good did they look last night? Boy, they were something else. What a job by starting quarterback. Put up big numbers. The Toledo defense. You know what? You look at the numbers defensively. They were just as solid. Dominated. Yeah. Gave up two points. And, 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 and that wasn't on defense. Yeah, that wasn't <laughs> defense. <laughs> And for UC Davis is a, a lesson learned. Austin Hayward, the second quarterback used by Bob Biggs Club. You know, this is a proud, proud football operation. 38 of the last 40 years. They have had winning seasons. At one point it was 37 straight. He's talking to Greg Chappell, the special teams coach right now. Total yards today for Bob Biggs team 70. It's going to break a streak of 442 games. Going back to 69 with at least 200 yards gained for the game. And again, in fairness, freshman quarterback, never seen this defense on film before, trying to get some things going. And Cal's defense is very athletic, very fast. For the UC Davis Aggies, they'll take on Portland State in their next game. They've got some, some high hopes this year after winning the Great West Conference. Preseason favorite to win the conference again. Bob Biggs. Now, there was talk in the last week of UC Davis and what their future holds. There was rumors about the WAC getting involved there. And Bob Biggs said UC Davis wants to be in a conference affiliation that gets them into an automatic bid in their situation. As time now winding down the final play of the game. And a, another big hit and thrown down by DeAndre Coleman. He just picks a player up and throws him down. A thrown down. It's a new statistic. <laughs> I believe they call it a pummeling yeah. in the stat sheet. That's what it was. But for Jeff Tedford, he moves up on the list. Career win number 68. With the help of Keenan Allen. When his first day was huge, so was Shane Vereen. But Keenan Allen said, hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, by the way, I'm your new receiver. And watch me run. He can catch it. He can roll. They're going to use him to throw the ball. Great field vision, knowing where his blocks are coming from, getting downfield, fantastic speed once he gets there. I mean, this guy is the whole package. Jeff Tedford said it right. This is what they look like at that position. Just had a phenomenal opening day for him in this offense, firing on all cylinders. I thought the Bears looked fantastic out there today. Offense, defense, they put it together. They look very balanced. Good day for that man, Jim Tedford. His 68th win. He moves ahead of Pappy Waldorf in the modern era with the most wins. Today's game, a presentation of Comcast Sportsnet. For more college football, switch over right now to Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. That's where you'll see Stanford take on Sacramento State. For more information, including upcoming schedules and events, go to csncalifornia.com. For our producer, David Feldman, our director, Mark Wilson. For my partners, Mike Pulaski, Dan Dibley, I'm Jim Cozumore. So long from Berkeley, Cal 52, UC Davis 3. Have a great weekend, everyone. Be safe.